You're looking at an area spanning some three counties where some seven million people call home. From Disneyland to Magic Mountain, from the desert to the sea, the ebb and flow of this massive community will slow for the next three hours, for this is the day of the annual UCLA Southern California football game. Forty-sixth game between these two crosstown rivals. Eighteen of these games have determined the Western representative for the Rose Bowl. It will again today, right here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Some 92,000 people come to watch in this massive old structure built in 1932 for the Olympic Games. UCLA ranks second in the country with nine wins and a tie and 14 consecutive games without a loss. USC, with an 8 1 record, losing only their opener to Missouri, ranked third in the country. And these two teams are so close statistically, it's remarkable. It's the kind of a matchup that almost finds its way into football legend in time. And there are the numbers defining the two teams. This ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to reality. One can look at the setting, listen to the noise, the circumstances, and say this is the kind of a football game that should wind up every season. Every element that you would ever hope to find in the fabric of a sporting moment like this is at hand. And listen to the roar as the Southern California Trojans come into the Coliseum. and the roar will start to build. The Trojans are in the Coliseum. The UCLA Bruins, which will be the home team for this 46th game, will be coming out of the tunnel in just a moment. And when they arrive, you'll know it because the place will shake, rattle, and roll, I think is the word from down the road. Era Parsegan is working with us today as our expert commentator. My name is Keith Jackson. Era, you have come through that tunnel just as the UCLA Bruins are doing right now. And when you come out of that tunnel, it's almost like the sky has fallen on you as it builds around you. It must really be something. Well, you've got 90,000 plus folks that are yelling. I came through that tunnel, but not very successfully for a number of years, so I don't like to be reminded of my particular involvement in this stadium. It has not been too kind to you, has it? All right, let's talk about the men who will make the decisions this afternoon. First, you have 32-year-old Terry Donahue, the head football coach at UCLA, and 41-year-old John Robinson of UCLA, both of them in their rookie seasons as head college football coaches. First, Terry Donahue. Well, I think he's done a remarkable job when you consider, consider that he was named the head football coach of the Bruins last year. You know, getting the job is one thing. There's very few guys get to be the football coach of a major university. But holding that job, he inherited a good football team, but he has taken them very well with the staff, takes them into this ball game without any losses, and I rather admire exactly the performance of uh, Terry. We were calling the opening game against Arizona State. Arizona State. We remarked how cool he was, and I guess maybe he had reason to be because he's taken this team into this game without loss. John Robinson said he and Terry both had the good fortune to come to schools that had very good players. Well, John Robinson also inherited a very fine football team. Again, putting them together and keeping them together has done a great job. It's interesting that yesterday in the newspaper, both coaches attributed the first game of the season as making the season for them. In the case of Terry Donahue, the Arizona State game, in the case of John Robinson, the Missouri game, which they lost. Yet he seems to think that that put them together. They've won eight straight ball games since that time, and it looks like a real football game this afternoon. And it will determine the Western representative for the Rose Bowl. Michigan has won their share of the Rose Bowl assignment, beating Ohio State 22-0. And Traveler 2 now prancing in front of the crowd, the music of conquest. And we are now ready for the introduction of the players who will start today's game. Here is Jim Lampley. Good afternoon. The players to be introduced for Southern Cal and UCLA, both teams introducing their starting offenses. It's split in. Number 18 for Southern Cal from Burbank, California, Randy Simran. 
the weak tackle number 78 from Saratoga, California, Otis Page. The guard, number 66 from Fresno, California, Pat Howell. The center, number 69 from Turlock, California, Gary Bethel. Strong guard, number 61 from Flagstaff, Arizona, Donnie Hickman. Tackle number 76 from Fayetteville, North Carolina, Marvin Powell. Tight end number 86 from San Diego, William Gay. Quarterback number 8 from Greensboro, North Carolina, Vince Evans. Fullback number 36 from Honolulu, Mosi Tatupu. Fullback number 15 from La Puente, California, Dave Farmer. Flanker number 26 from San Bernardino, Shelton Diggs. And a tailback number 42 from Los Angeles, Ricky Bell. And the head coach of the Southern California Trojans, John Robinson. For UCLA, a tight end number 85 from Pleasant Hill, Don Peterson. And left tackle number 70 from Fullerton, Gus Coppins. Left guard number 57 from Newport Beach, Keith Eck. The center, number 62, from La Palma, California, Mitch Kahn. Right guard, number 79, from Whittier, Greg Taylor. Right tackle, number 78, from Fresno, Rob Kazirian. At tight end, number 7, from Santa Ana, Ricky Walker. Quarterback, number 19, from Reno, Nevada, Jeff Dankworth. Left half, number 22, from Los Angeles, Wendell Tyler. 27 from Oakland, Theotis Brown. The flanker, number 8, from San Diego, Wally Henry. Safety, number 21, from Riverside, California, Oscar Edwards. And the head coach of the UCLA Bruins, Terry Donahue. Well, the scene has set, the preamble is over. It's one season in one day. We'll have it in a moment. Thanksgiving evening, Thursday evening, you'll be watching Rutgers undefeated with the longest winning streak in the country. Keith Jackson and Ara Parsegian have probably already told you that both Ricky Bell and Wendell Tyler come into this game somewhat injured. At any time during the game, there's a possibility that either may be re-injured and a backup may have to come into the game, but neither team will be hurting that badly. If for Southern Cal, Ricky Bell has to go out, the replacement is Charles White, a freshman from San Fernando High School, the same high school that produced Anthony Davis. He's already rushed for nearly 700 yards this year. He averages over six yards a carry, and he himself has said that he expects to win a Heisman Trophy before he leaves Southern Cal. For UCLA, the replacement for Tyler is James Owen. He was an Olympic hurdler on our United States Olympic team. He's gained over 100 yards in two of the last three UCLA games, and he doesn't hurt the Bruins that badly either. Now let's go up to Keith Jackson and Aaron Parsegian. And we are ready for the kickoff. The UCLA Bruins have won the toss. They have elected to receive. The Bruins will have Theotis Brown, number 27, and Wally Henry, number 8. That's Henry at the top of the screen, the little man, 5'9", 169, Brown, 6'3", 218. Kicking off will be Rob Kerr for the Southern California Trojans. The Coliseum is literally full of people. The temperature is 76 degrees, and the game is underway. Brown fumbles. And Bigfoot brings it back to the 28-yard line before the kicker, Rob Kerr, can bring him down. He might have broken a big one if he'd have gotten there a little sooner. Up front for UCLA, it is Don Patterson, Gus Coppins, Keith Ack, Mitch Kahn, Greg Taylor, Rob Kazarian, and Rick Walker. There was a penalty flag thrown on the kick return. The referee, John Presley, is talking with the UCLA captain. Jeff Dankworth at quarterback. Wendell Tyler will be at a running back position along with Theotis Brown, and your flanker will be Wally Henry. The referee, John Presley, Henry Sidoris, is the umpire. The penalty will be declined. It was offside against Southern California on the kickoff. 27-yard line, the ball is put down. Lee Joseph, the headlinesman. Jack Roberts, the line judge. Nathan Jones, the field judge. Don Wilson is the back judge. And here comes the first offensive play of the ball game, and the first time that Southern California will be looking at the Veer offense. Tyler and Brown are set behind Dankworth. Dankworth's got the ball. 
He pitches wide to Tyler, playing with a sore shoulder. He gets across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Defensively now for the Southern California Trojans, this is the way they take the field for this 46th game against Crosstown rival. Gary Jeter, 79 at tackle, Harold Steele is on the nose of the center. Walt Underwood is the other tackle. David Lewis, an outside linebacker, number 57. Rod Martin, the other side, number 52. Eric Williams, linebacker, inside 55 with Clay Matthews, number 60. We'll set the rest for you in a moment. It is second down, and they need three yards for the first down. It is Tyler diving over the left side, and he is close to his first down. In the defensive secondary for Southern California, and it's a very good group of people. Ricky Odom, number 33 at a cornerback, along with 23, Ron Bush. Clint Strozier is the rover back, number 49, and you'll see him all over the field. And Dennis Thurman is the safety, number seven. At one stretch of this season, Thurman intercepted a pass in seven consecutive games. So if he gets another one today, he'll just simply keep adding to his already prodigious total of pass interceptions in his career. The stretch of the chain, it is good for a first down for UCLA. Aaron Persigian. Keith, uh, Dennis Thurman on the opening play made a great saving tackle, really. And he's number four. We'll watch him in here. He's number four on the team in tackles with 62. And he's going to have to do the job because the secondary support will have to help to stop this real attack. All right, now you get Henry wide as Dankworth turns, Keith comes to the short side of the field, back to Wendell Tyler. And Tyler is across the 40-yard line. He moved it from the 37 to near the 42 for close to five yards. Wendell Tyler suffered a very minor shoulder dislocation. His arm is strapped down. He will not be able to reach up above his head today if, in fact, he has to go catch a pass. Ricky Bell, the other heralded back, is playing, is coming off a severe ankle sprain. He hurt some ligaments in his ankle. So both of the backs who got most of the preseason press are playing hurt today, but this is the kind of a game where everybody plays if they can walk. It is second down and a long five as Dankworth gives the ball to Tyler. And Tyler runs right into Clay Matthews, number 60, as he penetrates the line of scrimmage. They'll advance him to the 45-yard line. Number 60 plays a linebacking position era, and he is a good one for the Trojan. Keith, he's 6'2", 232 pounds, and watch him wipe off to the hole and really puts his helmet right on the ball carrier. Look at this. That's picture defensive work, and Tyler knew that he was met well by Clay Matthews. Matthews is num number two tackler on this football team on the Trojans with 86. Now it is third down and a long two for the... UCLA Bruins, Steve Kinlo is in, an extra linebacker, and the Bruins do not get the first down as Dennis Thurman comes out of the secondary to make the tackle. Number 57, Lewis, was over there, and so was Matthews as they tried to option to the tight side of the field. It did not work. And so the Southern California defense does its job. The Bruins will have to punt, and that'll bring on Frank Corral, who is averaging just under 44 yards a kick. Good punter. That was well defensed by the Trojans. It's interesting to see on the first series uh, how the Trojans were going to stop the there. They, they got off to a good start. Corral will hit it up around his 28-yard line. Dennis Thurman is deep. Three-man rush. The kick is away. He kicks it away from Thurman. Takes a high bounce, and there will be no return. It is a very fine kick by Corral as the ball rolls all the way to the 10-yard line. It's a 52-yard punt. Offensively for Southern California, Randy Simran, the white man. The big guys up front are Otis Page, Pat Howell, Gary Bethel, Donnie Hickman, Marvin Powell, and William Gay. In the backfield, it's Vince Evans at quarterback, Ricky Bell, the tailback, Dave Farmer, and Mossy Tatupu will alternate at fullback, and Shelton Diggs is the flanker. And if you want to know where the ball is going to go when the tailback gets it, well, just watch the fullback. He'll tell you. This is power football right here out of the I formation. Simran is wide to the left. First offensive possession for the Trojans. Bell cuts it back into the middle, and very little there for him, as Manu Tuiasa Sopo was the man to make the tackle. Setting the Bruins defensively, Pete Paley, number 59, at tackle, little Steve Tetrick, very quick at nose guard, and there is Tuiasa Sopo, another tackle. Raymond Burks is an outside linebacker, Frank Stevens on the other side. Raymond Bell goes inside, and Jerry Robinson, who has been a sensation this year, at the other inside position. 
set the secondary in a moment. It is second down and nine for USC from its 11-yard line, and it's Bell again. This time they split the Bruin defensive front, and Bell takes it to the 20-yard line for what appears to be a first down. The defensive secondary for the U.S. L.A. Bruins, and it's one of the best in the country. Levi Armstrong at cornerback, Harold Harden on the right side at corner. The safety is Oscar Edwards, and the other safety is Pat Schmidt. Schmidt, a great leaper. He's a 6'8 high jumper, and so the Trojans now come up with their first first down of the ball game. So in their initial possessions, both teams have recorded a first down. Just outside the 20. Call it the 21-yard line for USC. And this time it is the fullback, Dave Farmer, carrying the ball, and he wedges for about three yards. The fullbacks have been averaging a uh, good yardage for the Trojans. Masi Tatupu has averaged 7.4, and Dave Farmer has averaged 9.3. And Dave Farmer has just hobbled off the field, favoring his right leg. It might be a knee, it might be an ankle. Masi Tatupu replaces him. Dave Farmer is a senior. Tatupu is a junior from Honolulu. And there is David, and he's had a lot of injury troubles in his career. It is second down, and call it seven yards to go for USC from the 23-yard line. Vince Evans back to throw, 52% passer, throws, digs on the sidelines. First down, Southern California at the 41-yard line. An isolated look at Shelton Diggs doing his thing. He just drives right up the field, and of course, this is a big difference in the Trojan ball club. Evans is completing 52% of his passes this year, and a year ago at the same date, it was 29%. You see Sheldon Diggs with 25 catches, his 26th year, and a first down for the Trojans. At the 41-yard line, SC with a second first down of this possession in the first quarter with 11 minutes to play. Ball is handed to Tatupu. The big Samoan is across midfield. He drives it down to the UCLA. 44, now they'll mark it at the 46-yard line. 13 yards on the carry. Marvin Powell and Bill Gay, the tight end and tackle, open the hole for him. They seal the Bruin pursuit, and away he went. He watched the work here against the inside linebacker era, Jerry Robinson. Jerry Robinson's been an outstanding tackler for the Trojans. Actually, uh, Tatupu read that away from the daylight. He, I think it was designed up the middle, but by golly, he ran it to the outside and got a lot of daylight. Evans back to throw. Looks for Simran. Throws it over his head. Evans had good protection, had plenty of time. Hickman, 61, Powell, 76, and Ricky Bell, 42, were all in front of the quarterback. You couldn't have reached him with somebody else's hoe handle on that play, but he could not find Randy Simran. A little overthrown there, but Evans is a really a much improved passer in 1976 over a year ago. Second down and 10 from the UCLA 46-yard line. It is Tupu, the fullback, Tuiasa Sopo, number 40, first man to get a hold of him, and then he gets a little help from 84, Jerry Robinson, to bring him down. Gain is from the 46 down to about the 40. That's six yards, and it's a kind of a, a play that you see these USC fullbacks do a lot, and you, you watch them, and you don't realize by the end of the ball game they've got 75, 85 yards on you. The other thing, too, Keith, is I think that the, the Bruins are keying on Bell uh, they're giving the ball to the fullback, uh, to Tupu, away from where Bell is going. It is third down. They need four. Evans to throw it. Looks for Simran. Pressure's on. They miss him. Now they get him at the 39-yard line, short of the first down. It's going to bring up a fourth down and about three yards. Nine minutes and 40 seconds to play. On the field, you had an injury a moment ago, Dave Farmer. Jim Lampley has some word. Keith Dave Farmer's been a hard luck player throughout his career. Broken leg last year that kept him out all last year. He has a sprained knee coming into this game that had been bothering him a little bit, and sure enough, it was hurt early. Tatupu will probably have to go most of the way as Farmer has the knee wrapped with ice now. And it's punting time on fourth down and three with Severn Reese number one and Michael Coulter deep. And Glenn Walker hangs it high for USC. He hits a knuckleball toward the corner, and it is in the end zone. It'll be UCLA's ball first down at the 20-yard line with 9.07 to go first quarter, and we have no score yet. Right here, the UCLA Bruins now with their second offensive possession of the ball game. As they force the Trojans to punt. And it is the same lineup, Tyler and Brown behind Dankworth. His pass is caught. 
at the 33-yard line, and it's a first down for UCLA. So the Bruins put it up with some success. Did a good job on it. It was a good play. First down and 10. Uh, the Trojans looking for an obvious run. Just a down and out pattern with a fake to the uh, Theotis Brown. Held the inside linebacker and the rover came up to support. And of course it was an easy completion. First down Bruins 33. Theotis Brown slants in over the left side behind the left guard Keithek and Gus Kappen. Coppins, the left tackle. And he's got four yards on the carry. I referred to him a moment ago as Bigfoot. They call him that for a very good reason. He wears a size 15 Triple E shoe. But let me tell you, those big feet can haul that big guy around. Nice young man. And a heck of a football player. Second down and six yards to go. Dankworth's pass. Incomplete. We get a penalty flag thrown as Wally Henry cut in between two USC defenders and he was bumped. He was pitched by Ricky Odom and Dennis Thurman and uh, the official standing right there immediately threw the flag. Well, you had contact before the ball got there. You see Wally Henry driving down instead of running the out pattern this time. He breaks to the inside. He's well covered really. The contact is made right here before the ball gets there. As you see, I believe it's number 23, Ron Bush. No, That's 33, Bush. Odom. 33, is it Odom? Yeah, Ricky Odom. Pinched him right in between him. So it is at the 47-yard line of Southern California. First down. So for the first time today, the Bruins are in Trojan country. Still no score. Eight and a half minutes to go first quarter. Dankworth wants to put it up again. He's got a man going deep. He'll never get it to him. He throws short to Tyler. And right there is Eric Williams, linebacker, coming from the inside position for Southern California. And he drops him back on the 49-yard line. Here's Jim. One situation we're going to keep an eye on throughout the day, or at least another eye away from this football game, is the one in the Big Eight, where coming into this weekend, there's a five-way tie for first place. Five teams that still have a chance to go to the Orange Bowl. Two games today that are very, very important. Oklahoma State is playing Iowa State, and right now, Oklahoma State is leading that game 21-14. Colorado is tied with Kansas State at halftime, 14 all. We'll follow both those games. Keith? Second down and 12 from the 49-yard line. Bankworth rolls. He's looking. He throws. It is to Henry. Henry's got it. Odom throws him out of bounds. It looks like Wally might have a first down. They had two men on that side. They sent Homer Butler on a fly down the sidelines and cut Henry in behind him. Butler just clears out from the outside. You can't see him in the screen here. And then, of course, Wally Henry just breaks underneath it. And again, uh, well executed. Dankworth is really throwing well, and there's a lot of seams because I think the Trojans are looking for the running game, which has uh, brought the Bruins into this game with the success that they've enjoyed. And they are just short of the first down. If Wally had been able to turn it up, there's the 32-year-old head coach of the Bruins, Terry Donahue. J.D. Morgan, athletic director, says Terry bleeds blue and gold. Third down and one. Tyler. Got it. He takes the ball to the Southern California 29, maybe the 28-yard line. And it will be good. They'll put it on the 29. John Robinson at 41 years of age. Played his college football at the University of Oregon. John had a good line earlier in the week when somebody said, well, what do you think about the big game? And he said, well, where are they playing it? Corvallis or Eugene? <laughs> Both men handled themselves admirably this week. They're fine gentlemen. First down at the 34-yard line. And here's the pressure. It came from Clint Strozier, the rover, who came up and blitzed the quarterback. He read pass all the way, and he got his man. I guess just right. They had what we call a rover blitz on. Clint Strozier is a strong safety or a rover back. He came up to the line of scrimmage and blitzed at the proper time and came underneath the blocker and, of course, negative yardage. And now we have second down, about 16. Good play. Coming out at nose guard, 71 for Southern Cal. Harold Steele going in. Rich Dimmler, 92. Dimmler, 260. Steele, a mere 240. They want the muscle in. Here's the Bruins to put it up. Bankworth, pinch. Down he goes. Rod Martin, number 52, linebacker. Came outside to get him along with the tackle Jeter. Now in running the veer, 
against the kind of defensive setup that Southern Cal's got, Arrow, you've got to option Jeter and try to option an outside linebacker. Well, they were trying to throw the football that time. Tankworth making the fake, and the uh, Trojans did a great job of changing up their defense. Uh, Ricky Odom stayed in the flat that time instead of being driven off by Butler. And, of course, the inside man, Henry, hooked up, but there was good coverage by the inside backers. Good and strategy. the ball is all the way back at the 48-yard line, so the Bruins are backing up. They've got third down and a half mile to go and give the ball to Tyler and Wendell's falls down short of midfield lost his footing. They're playing on natural turf here and that brings in the punting unit for UCLA. So the Southern California defense in that series showed they can handle it here. One of the interesting things about that series Keith is that they changed their defense on every play. I was very much impressed. They blitzed the strong safety. They dropped him off in what we call a double zone and then that last time they had a man coverage on. They're mixing it up well. Now Corral is in to kick, and that's Dennis Thurman, number seven, waiting to receive the, the punt. Looking up into the sun, the kick is away, and it's a gorgeous kick. It'll go into the end zone as Corral just really nailed all of that one. He hit it 51 yards, and with 5.20 to go in the first quarter, we still have no score between the Bruins and the Trojans. the score out of the Southwest Conference Texas A&M a team we saw whip Arkansas last week rolling along Ag is looking awfully good here it is first down Southern California at the 20 yard line Vince Evans gives to Ricky Bell and the Trojan tailback running the blast right takes it up to about the 22 yard line before he is dropped by Steve Tetrick and Jerry Robinson also to Tupu is the fullback and coming into the lineup for the Trojans now, checking in is number 16. That is Mike Robinson, a swift one from Richmond, California, replacing Randy Simran. He's caught five passes for 81 yards. He's got good speed and a dangerous receiver. Shelton Diggs is left and Robinson is right as the Trojans work out of the eye and the five-man front right there for UCLA. But they give it to the tailback bell and Ricky hits it to the 25-yard line. It'll ring up a third down and five. One of the things we're seeing again here today, Keith, uh, if you recall in the Arizona State game when UCLA played, the Ohio State game is a tremendous quickness of the Bruin defense. They recover well. Ricky Bell is healthy, but so is the Bruin defense. So on third down and five, the Trojans is right as the Trojans work out of the eye and the five-man front right there for UCLA. But they give it to the tailback Bell, and Ricky hits it to the 25-yard line. It'll ring up a third down and five. One of the things we're seeing again here today, Keith, uh, if you recall in the Arizona State game when UCLA played, the Ohio State game is a tremendous quickness of the Bruin defense. They recover well. Ricky Bell is healthy, but so is the Bruin defense. So on third down and five, the Trojans come up with Simran back in, and he comes wide left with Diggs going right. Figures to be a passing down, but don't necessarily bet on it. Bruins right now don't read pass. Now they drop a couple of guys off the front, and Evans rolls to his right and sets. Good protection. Throws short to Bell, the tailback. He's got a first down. He takes it to the 37-yard line for USC. Gain of 13 yards on that play. The National Junior College Athletic Association, the regulatory body for the nation's largest junior college athletic program, has its national headquarters in Hutchison, Kansas, the site of the men's national basketball tournament. But when you talk about junior college athletics, you think of Southern California because they have so many here. And every year, these two teams really reap the harvest from great college football programs at the national junior college level. Here's Evans handing to Ricky Bell. And the tailback looks pretty quick. That ankle must not be too sore as he knifes in for about four. I watched him work out in the pregame, and uh, he looked real strong. Now, of course, you get a weakness in the ankle like he has. If he turns it wrong, he could always re-injure it. But he looked very strong in warm-up, and, of course, thus far in the game, he's run very well. Bell now five carries and 18 yards in the ball game so far. Vince Evans, whose career has been turned around one season to the other. Paul Hackett, quarterback coach of the Trojans, one of the major reasons. Hackett developing good throwers up at California as Tutufu carries. And he goes from the 41-yard line, the line of scrimmage. But I don't think Mosey got back to that point because they deck him at the 40-yard line. And it was one Samoan against another one. Watch this. And that two, yeah, so, so far, I, I was very much impressed with him in the other games that we have done. He veers to the inside, beats his blocker, makes the first hit even though he loses to Tupu. He still has got the quickness 
uh, to get, penetrate the line of scrimmage and raise a lot of cane. It's third down and eight yards to go now for USC from their 40-yard line as Mosse lost a yard on the previous carry. One lone remaining back, and now it looks like the Trojans are going to get hit with a delay of game penalty. That'll cost them five yards. Next Friday on ABC Sports, we've got some excitement for you as ninth-ranked Oklahoma meets 11th-ranked Nebraska at 2 Eastern time. And then it'll be Pittsburgh, top-ranked in the nation, against Penn State at Three River Stadium at 9 Eastern time. So doubleheader next Friday, Oklahoma-Nebraska 2 and Pitt-Penn State at 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. Here they are with a double wing uh, for the first time. Probably on third down and 13. Tutupu! No, it is. Mossy didn't pick up Tuiasa Sopo, and Manu just kept right on coming around. Oh, <laughs> he's some kind of football player, I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that Johnny Robinson has done is he lets those uh, fullbacks drop back in pass protection, and they slide out of there, and they've caught a lot of passes this year. Mossy came out of there, and then suddenly Manu Tuiasa Sopo came <laughs> roaring in. We're going to see more of him this afternoon, I'm sure. All right, here's the punt now as Glenn Walker is in for Southern Cal as the loss takes them all the way back to the 24-yard line. Deep men are Severn Reese and Michael Coulter for UCLA. Very little pressure on Walker, and Glenn gets it up. Not a particularly long kick, and a fair catch is called by Michael Coulter, a junior out of Texarkana, Texas. The ball will be at about the 41-yard line after a 35-yard kick, and we still have no score. Chevrolet announces a $200 cash bonus direct from Chevrolet on every new Chevy Vega and Chevy Chevette. Delivered from stock by January 10, 1977 or ordered by December 10, 1976. This $200 cash bonus applies regardless of purchase price agreed on at dealership. It can be used against the down payment or a check for $200 will come to you from Chevrolet. So see your Chevrolet dealer now for a $200 cash bonus on Vega and Chevette. You know, Fireman's Fund says, for the best insurance, look for our fire hat. But there's another symbol just as important. It belongs to the man who sells our insurance, the independent agent. Because he represents not just us, but many fine companies to get you the very best deal around. So even if you forget our symbol, remember this one of the man who serves you first, your independent agent. He's got the one symbol it pays you to know. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. In the game that could decide which team from the Southwest Conference will play host in the Cotton Bowl, Houston is leading Texas Tech 7-2 in the first period. Keith Jackson. Thank you, Jimmy, at the 41-yard line. First down for the UCLA Bruins with a minute and 28 seconds to go in the first quarter. Dankworth keeps the ball, turns it up to the left side, and gets out across the 45 to the 46. He got five yards on that carry, and this Monday on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, we've got a dandy, the Baltimore Colts and the Miami Dolphins, a big ball game in the AFC Eastern Division, as the Colts will try to keep the lead. That's at 9 Eastern Time, 8 Central over most of these ABC stations. Second down, and well, let's call it a long five for UCLA. It's the Yotas Brown flashing over the left side behind Keith Eck. Now, up in the middle of that UCLA line is a fellow named Mitch Kahn, who is a very good one, and the, so far in a ball game, the USC nose guard is playing him head on, and Kahn generally can handle somebody who will play him head on. He's a, he's a very fine football player. You know, one of the interesting things, too, about the Otis Brown, uh, I know that Ricky Bell has made about 1,175 yards, but this Theotis Brown has carried 168 times for 927 yards. He's very close to the 1,000-yard mark, and he's been in the end zone 11 times. And for a sophomore, that, that's not too bad in stats. And it's a first down for UCLA at the USC 48-yard line with 44 seconds to play in the first quarter. Earlier today, Michigan defeated Ohio State at Columbus 22 to nothing. And so the Michigan Wolverines are finally going to get to come back to the Rose Bowl. The winner of this game will be the host team. And it's Dankworth handing to Tyler. And Window hits it to the 45 for three yards before he is brought down by Clay Matthews, a junior from Kenilworth, Illinois. In the lineup defensively for USC now, Vinnie Van Dyke, 252-pound junior from Greenwich, Connecticut. 
both linebackers fired that time. I was kind of surprised. Both Matthews and uh, Eric Williams, right on the snap of the ball fired. They went into a gap situation. I guess they guessed right on it. Rich Dimbler in at the nose guard position as we wind down to the final seconds of the first quarter. They get the playoff. They give it to Theodos Brown on second down and seven. He goes from the 45 down to about the 40. And the first quarter is over. After one at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, no score. Hi, how are you? Yeah, me too. Waiter? I was wondering about these little stuffed mush rooms. Operator? Operator? But I can hear you. When you get the feeling that nobody hears you, that's the time to get a Cobra Citizens Band radio. Breaker, breaker, one nine. This is the wild one. Anybody read me? Come on. Because with the Cobra two-way, everybody hears you. Loud and clear. <laughs> Good, Betty. How's it going? All right. I read you loud and clear, wild one. This is a wild one. Come on. When it comes to CB radio, punch through loud and clear with a Cobra. This engine is weaving its way through the mountains of Oregon and pulling the incredible weight of 13 cars with a strap woven from Flex 10 tire cord, a Goodyear exclusive. Tire cord is the main reinforcing agent in a tire. Flex 10 tire cord is made from a man-made aramid fiber that is pound for pound stronger than steel. Tensile strength is only one of the many performance properties in a tire, but it's one of the most important. Flex 10, the tire cord of the future from Goodyear. We go now to the second quarter of play, and here are the numbers off the first 15 minutes. Pretty even quarter, without any question. The time of 7.35 and 7.35, I think, tells you the story is over. After one at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, no score. Hi, how are you? Yeah, me too. Waiter? I was wondering about these little stuffed mush rooms. Operator? Operator? But I can hear you. When you get the feeling that nobody hears you, that's the time to get a Cobra Citizens Band radio. Breaker, breaker, one nine. This is the wild one. Anybody read me? Come on. Because with the Cobra two-way, everybody hears you. Loud and clear. Hey, you know, wild one. What's your 20? <laughs> hey, good, Betty. How's it going? All right. I read you loud and clear, wild one. This is a wild one. Come on. When it comes to CB radio, punch through loud and clear with a Cobra. This engine is weaving its way through the mountains of Oregon and pulling the incredible weight of 13 cars with a strap woven from Flex 10 tire cord, a Goodyear exclusive. Tire cord is the main reinforcing agent in a tire. Flex 10 tire cord is made from a man-made aramid fiber that is pound for pound stronger than steel. Tensile strength is only one of the many performance properties in a tire, but it's one of the most important. Flex 10, the tire cord of the future from Goodyear. We go now to the second quarter of play, and here are the numbers off the first 15 minutes. Pretty even quarter, without any question. The time of 7.35 and 7.35, I think, tells you just about what happened in this first quarter. Third down and two yards to go, and Dankworth is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Hit first by Eric Williams, number 55, and then he is put away by Vinny Van Dyke, and they hit him short of the line of scrimmage. Watch, watch this Eric Williams come flying up in here. Number 55. He reads the action. He penetrates a gap. He's going so hard, he goes over top of Dankworth and loses him momentarily. But he really fired in. He guessed right again, I think. I, one thing that impresses me thus far, Keith, is the, the continual changes in the Trojan defense. They are giving the Bruins plenty to think about on every play. There are two very well-coached football teams on the field. Now, if, in fact, we do get a field goal, it'll be 58 yards. And now a time is signaled by the referee charged to UCLA. Frank Corral would be going for his record distance of 58 yards if he takes a shot at it. 
We'll be right back. Stanley salutes Olympic champions Bill and Mary Toomey. We've really had fun working in this backyard fitness center for our little champions. You just follow these plans from Stanley. And with Stanley tools, it's easy to do it right. Hi. Stanley, we want to help you do things right. And keeping fit is doing things right. <laughs> Get free plans at participating stores or write to Stanley. We want to help you do things right. One of these batteries started a whole revolution in automobile batteries. The J.C. Penney battery. There are no filler caps. You never have to add water. It's the most powerful battery ever built for a passenger car. That's why it's fully warranted for as long as you own your car. If it fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. All right, Frank Correll is lining up for a field goal try of right around 57, 58 yards. It will be, let's call it 57 yards. He's hit a 55-yarder. He's kicking into the wind. He does hit it, and it is well short. It is into the end zone. Southern California will get the ball. First down at the 20. We still have no score, but speaking of scores, here's Jimmy. Okay, Keith, and while we've got a moment, let's take a look at some scores from around the country. West Virginia beat Syracuse this afternoon, 34-28. North Carolina, 39-38 over Duke. Must have been an incredible game in the Tar Heels finished the season at 9-2. Clemson, 28-9 over South Carolina. Mississippi State is leading Mississippi, 16-3 in the fourth quarter. Kentucky with an upset win over Tennessee, 7-0. And Kentucky and Tennessee have both been discussed as possible bid receivers for the Tangerine Bowl. Keith? First down, USC now as we come back in here for the Rose Bowl decider. Defense Evans at quarterback, pitches it back to Ricky Bell. There's absolutely no foolishness on that play. That is what John McKay calls student body right, and that's a classic example of it. They really got leverage that time. Florida jumping all over Rice. It's been a long day for Homer and his troops out of Houston. Michigan State losing to Iowa. Bob Cummings' team finishes strong out of the Big Ten. Indiana beating Purdue. That's got to be a surprise. Boy. Wisconsin uh, leading Minnesota 26-17. And Illinois jumping all over Jimmy Ritz, alma mater right now. Northwestern, Miami, and Notre Dame with the Irish winning at 40-27. I'm sure Notre Dame's going to be in a postseason bowl. Here's Bell, the Southern Cal tailback. On first down from the 33, getting it out to about the 36-yard line. Cincinnati beating Vanderbilt today. Lou Saban never really got the chair warm as athletic director there. He's gone already. Didn't apparently change his mind about the job. Kansas over Missouri, 34 to nothing. Talking about surprises. Oh, that's a real surprise, isn't it? And Baylor getting stronger in the second half of the season, leading Texas 14 to 3. All right, here we go. Second down and... Let's say seven yards to go from the 37-yard line. Mosi Tatupu carries for Southern California, the fullback, and they get him at the 40-yard line. So the Trojans now will come up third down and three. Nothing fancy about the Trojans. They just come up to the line of scrimmage. They run straight power football and blend it together with run action passes. Very fundamentally sound. Maryland winning again today. There's a big ball game in the Big Eight. Oklahoma State, the Cowboys leading 21 to 14 over Iowa State. Third down and three yards to go for the Trojans. That's Diggs in motion coming back toward the snap of the ball. The pitch is wide to Ricky Bell, and Bell cannot get the first down. He did not look as quick that time on his takeoff as I have seen him in the past. He got to about the 40, but then give that bunch of UCLA linebackers some credit as Robinson, Bell, and Burks were all chasing him. Harold Harden came flying up from the right corner and forced the play back to the inside and gave the linebackers an opportunity to flow to the ball. And it's fourth down and a yard to go, and Southern California, not yet in a gambling mood, will punt. With Severne Reese and Michael Coulter deep, and Glenn Walker, who's averaging just under 40 yards per punt, back to hit it. 12 minutes to go in the first half, and no score in the ball game. One man pressure, Walker's kick is away, and it's a honey. Gonna hang and hang and hang, and... Uh, Michael Coulter drops back on the fair catch to get it in between the 17-18. That's 40 yards on the punt. I'll give you an idea of how effective Walker is. He hung the ball, Era, five seconds. 
is a great punter. And you know, the, the interesting thing, too, so far in this ball game, only on one occasion has either one of the two teams had any kind of field position, and that was the Bruins at about the 41 or 42 yard line. But both teams have had to start and go on long drives, and of course, it's a sign of good, fundamentally sound football teams. Corky Bellinger in the Goodyear Blimp Columbia soaring overhead with our cameraman Archie Griffith as we look down into the Coliseum again and the Bruins try to move the ball on the ground and they have not moved it very much so far in this ball game on the ground against the Trojans. Theotis Brown that time carrying and number 95 was right there. Walt Underwood, a junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. Well, it's not that big, but uh, he's a very yeah. active defensive lineman. That's one of the things that impresses me about the Otis Brown. Now, it looked like that play just had nothing, and they did move the marker three yards. He did pick up three yards on it, and looked like it was stopped cold. 21 yards so far in the ball game total for UCLA on the ground. Bankworth turns it up. The Bruin quarterback goes to the 40-yard line for a first down. He ran for 19 yards. Ron Bush and Ricky Odom finally got it. The guy that set a good block on that was Bill Gay, number 86. The tight end released downfield and was able to screen off the pursuit by the linebackers and made it a big gainer for Dankworth. At the 40-yard line, you have a double tight end alignment in there now for UCLA. Don Patterson, 85, and Rick Walker, number 7. Henry the flanker goes wide. They do that in order to uh, keep the defense from stacking on you, but now you get... The Bruins are oh, fumble, and it goes right into Dennis Thurman's hands. It's a foot race. It's going to be a touchdown. Wow. <laughs> Lightning strikes as Theotis Brown had gone through the line of scrimmage and looked like he was on his way for a big yardage, but somebody slapped the ball loose and went absolutely straight into the hands of Thurman. And a look what I found, touchdown. What a play. It looked like Theotis Brown was going to come out of there and force Thurman into a one-on-one -on -one open field tackle. And the ball came flying out right into Thurman's hands. And that's the kind of break that a football team needs in a tight ball game like this. And it's a big break. The snap is high. The kick by Walker is good. Bob Hurdle handled it well. And so with 10.45 to go in the first half, the Trojans jump on top 7 to nothing. and here's another look at it. This is a well-blocked play. Watch the Otis Brown come through here. Let's see what... Oh, he hit... I think it was... Uh, Rod Martin. I was it one. Martin? The ball flew out. He really was going to make some big yardage on it. Here's Thurman going the other way with it. And, of course, that's the kind of play that really makes it tough. 47 yards on the touchdown run by Thurman. Trojans lead the Bruins 7-0. Right there. You know, the same audience sees me Monday through Friday. And I need a lot of different looks. So I stick with Hager. Tomorrow, for example, it's Hager's corduroy outfit. Thursday, this European look. And Friday, a rich double-knit tweed with piping and patches. The price is so reasonable, I can afford to change as often as the weather. Hager, America's best-known name in slacks. What does it take to start the wheels of American industry rolling? It takes machines, men, and money. That's where savings and loans come in. Money you save with us goes back into your community in the form of home loans. The savings and loan commitment to housing generates over $100 million a day for jobs, goods, and services. Help keep America rolling by having your savings account at your savings and loan. up on the Trojan side of the field after that moment of good fortune to put USC on top seven to nothing. Rob Kerr will kick it off for Southern Cal and the deep men will be Theotis Brown who was the subject of the misfortune and Wally Henry. They're the deep men with 10.45 to go in the first half. Looks like they're trying to kick it away favoring Theotis Brown. They figure he might be a little upset, but uh, he leaves it alone, and Henry takes it at the three. And Henry goes down at the 24. Let's go back and have another look at the touchdown play from a different angle. I think what actually happens on it is that Theotis Brown has the ball here, and it looks like he hits 
wide to center, I think, or left guard. And the ball comes right to Thurman. It's the kind of break that a team looks for. And certainly Trojans capitalize on it at 7 to nothing. Now UCLA got to pull themselves back together at the 23-yard line. First down. Double flanker left side. Dankworth, the quarterback, gives it to Tyler. Tyler runs into David Lewis, number 57. Here's the other angle. Watch the right elbow of Theodos Brown. I believe it is Eck. You see it hits his left hip, and the ball just squirts out and forward with a lot of momentum and right into Thurman's hands. And actually, it's one of those things that happens in the game. It is really a freakish thing. Theodos Brown's got a well-blocked play, left play. His right elbow hits the left hip, and I think it is either Ecker, Coppins, or Kahn. I can't tell exactly who it is, but There's it's... There's a precedence for it, though. In 1974 in this game, Thurman did the same thing, except he went for 85 yards, and that one, the pass, is caught by Homer Butler as Dankworth goes back to the air and moves the ball upfield for a first down out to the 30... Let's see, about the 38-yard line. Seven to five now as Texas Tech has gotten a field goal in the second quarter of play. Houston and Texas Tech and the winner of that one probably has a very good chance of being the host team in the Cotton Bowl. It's like a baseball score. I wonder yeah. which relievers are in there. Dankworth now four for four in his passing for 37 yards out on the 38 yard line. Play goes up the middle with Brown the big sophomore out of Oakland 218 pounds carrying. He got about three maybe four yards out of that play. The Pacific 8 Conference has a rather unique marriage with the Rose Bowl. The Pac-8 has separate contracts with the Tournament of Roses to administer the game and with the Big Ten Conference to provide the visit and competing teams. It's undoubtedly the most successful three-party agreement that's come along in years in intercollegiate athletics. Second down, call it seven from the 41. Dankworth to throw, throws to the sidelines, and he's almost intercepted by Ricky Odom. Number 33. He would have been off to the races if he had hung on to that ball. Good change up again by the Trojans in defense. It looks like looked like uh, Wally Henry had single coverage out there. I was watching it closely, but uh, it wasn't. They went to a double zone, and the Odom came up from the outside and would have gone all the way. They think they're lucky stars that Odom uh, didn't hang on to it. Otherwise, they're down 13, 14 zip. Yes, sir. Here's another look at it. He's got the ball right in his hands. Watch this. And he's off down. He's off on a touchdown run. Dankworth pitches wide to Brown. Brown coming to the wide side of the field. Can't find any place to turn it up the field as Odom again was among those out there. But that linebacker Rod Martin was also right there to help him out. So it brings up a punting down for UCLA. Fourth and four. Another good series for the Trojans defensively. Well, they're a little hot now after that good fortune. Yeah. Which could have been much more fortunate if Odom hangs onto that ball. Corral is deep to punt. And Thurman is deep to receive. Low kick. Good carry on it. Thurman's going to let it go. And it was a good decision. Yeah. I thought for a moment it might uh, be a bit of a knuckleball and die down close, but it didn't. So it'll come back to the 21st down. Here's Jim. This is Anthony Davis, the man who gained more yards than either O.J. or Ricky Bell in his Pac-8 career and just signed to go to the NFL. Anthony, I want to ask you something about pro football, but I only got a second here. There's some people who say that USC's tradition and glamour doesn't intimidate UCLA anymore. What do you think? I don't think so because... Uh, if you notice all these games year to year, it's right down to the last minute. And you see UCLA's talent is matched man for man out here. So you don't think either team intimidates the other team with tradition or history? Uh, I think in, in, in a lot of sense, SC had the edge because of all the wins. But now, in the last three or four years, it's neck and neck all the way. You might be playing with Ricky Bell down at Tampa Bay. That might be something. I hope that can happen because Coach McKay is a fine individual, and uh, I know he'll have a winning situation there soon. Okay, Anthony Davis, thank you very much. Let's go back up to Keith Jackson. Anthony choosing to go from Canada down to Tampa Bay, and there he'll find out what uh, expansion football is all about. They're talking now to the defensive captain for the UCLA Bruins, 
Obviously, the penalty against the Trojans. The snap was fumbled. The loss on the play of about a half a yard. So, as we look down on the Coliseum, the Bruins decide to take the play to bring up second down, and let's say 11 from just inside the 20. One lone remaining back now as they've got double wide receivers. One wide left, one wide right, and here is Evans getting a little heat. They run him out of the pocket, and Vince just literally frozen. He had no place to go, and now you get a penalty flag thrown after the quarterback was down. And that might be bad news for the Bruins. Well, looks like a personal foul. Yeah. That will cost UCLA 15 yards. Looked like a late hit. The quarterback was down. As Evans came up there, it looked like he just stopped. Yeah, he kind of squatted. I don't know whether he was thinking about staying behind the line of scrimmage for a pass, but he just stopped there and uh, maybe looking for a receiver. Is it... Uh, let's take a look here. Here's the replay of it. Yeah, yeah. That's just exactly what you've got to avoid in college football. You can't put the helmets in there. That was a good call. Thrown against Tuiasa Sopo. It's first down. Southern California. Just short of the 35-yard line. As Vince Evans sets to throw, and he can't do it. Steve Tetrick, the nose guard. 214-pound junior from Northridge, California, came hard. Boy, was he quick on that play. Tetrick was uh, injured and out in the early part of the season, but he certainly demonstrated there why he was number one prior to the time he was injured. He's got great quickness. Loss of about seven yards on the play. Thanksgiving night, 8.30 Eastern time. NCAA college football, regional coverage, Texas A&M and the University of Texas from Austin. You'll also see Appalachian State at East Carolina and Colgate against undefeated Rutgers. Check your local listings for the game in your area. On second down, 17. Evans pulls it down and takes off. Pops it up. Bruins claiming they've got it, but I've yet to see a man with a striped shirt say so. Did he call it dead? He called it dead, I think. I don't know. Let's wait and see. USC keeps the ball. Let's take a look and see uh, whether the ball was down. There's Evans with the ball, number eight. Ball comes out. Right, it's a fumble. Yeah, and he could have run the ball. Yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, there's no question about it being a fumble. Apparently, the official that called it from the far sideline is screened off from the ball coming out. There's the ball is loose there. Now, that's Levi Armstrong yeah, that, coming across to catch it. That should have been the Bruins ball from what it looks like in the replay. Unless Armstrong fumbled it back. They call it third down and a half a yard. Give it a bell. Bell dives and gets what appears to be the first down. So if Armstrong, in fact, did not fumble the ball back to the Trojans, that was, in fact, a bad call. I don't think that he did fumble it back. I think he had possession of it, and uh, he jumped up and gave the ball to the official. And I think the far side official is the one that uh, was screened off from the ball coming out. Sometimes those things are judgment calls, but from the replay, it's uh, evident that it should belong, the ball should belong to the Bruins. We'll look at it again. It's worth talking about. Six minutes and 45 seconds to play first half. Trojans lead, 7-0. First down at the 45-yard line. Evans pass, right in the air, and then caught by a man in a red shirt. The ball was slapped up in the air, and number 86, Bill Gay, the tight end who had come into a short pattern, was able to come across and make the reception. Keith, I'll tell you, if, uh, if that ball had not been slapped down, Oscar Edwards, I think, might have picked it off and gone the other have. way. Right, he was right there. Raymond Burks, the linebacker, was the man that hit the pass. They gained five to midfield. Bell, big hole. First down Trojans at the UCLA 43-yard line. Tatupu, big block on the play. Good, uh, well-blocked play. That's as solid a play, I think, as uh, the Trojans have run uh, against the Bruins. Jerry Robinson is number 84. Watch him. He's the number one tackler on this Bruin team with uh, 100 and some. Here he comes flowing with the play. Of course, you can see the size of the line. <laughs> Number 65 is that uh, Brad Buddy, I guess it is. He's a man. Bell again into the middle. Got a yard. Brad Buddy, a freshman. 
Son of Ed, of course, and Ed, who's been playing pro football almost all of Brad's life, says he's going to hang it up after this season. That old dude is 6'6 six, six and about 250 pounds, and he's a freshman. I tell you, he's some kind of man. The guy who alternates with him is only a sophomore, and he weighs 252. So there's, <laughs> there's some glad, security I'm, in that position. I'm sure glad we're up here, Keith. <laughs> Woo. All right, here come the Trojans now. Second down and nine from the Bruin 42-yard line. Trojans leading 7 to nothing, And playing with some luck here in this first half. Evans shoots a bullet to Simran. Good. Down he goes at the UCLA 27-yard line. First down. This program brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. All right, USC now beginning to move it in the direction of the UCLA goal line, and they are getting close to Glenn Walker's field goal range if they're not able to punch it in. Evans hands to the first man, the fullback, the Tupu. He's to the 21-yard line. He got the better part of six yards. Here's Jim. Keep Ricky Bell has already carried the ball a good deal in this game. A week ago, 21 yards and 12 carries up at Oregon State. But Ricky is a guy who is almost impervious to pain. When I talked to him two days ago at practice, he said it was the first day that the pain had gone away completely from his ankle. He seemed to run pretty well at practice, and believe me, that brought an enormous amount of excitement and happiness to the USC coaches who had been very, very apprehensive about the extent to which he would be able to participate in this game. But right now it looks as if Ricky Bell is his old self, running without pain, and as I say, 45 or 50 carries in some games. He is, according to his coaches, someone who is almost completely impervious to pain. We've had a 15-yard penalty marked off against USC for holding. Backs him up to the Bruin 40-yard line. First down. Evans throws it short to Gay, the tight end. And that big horse takes it down to about the 31-yard line. He's 6'6", 225-pound junior out of San Diego. Frank Stevens at 6'2", 190 pounds, took him on. What we have here is Gay just delays here. The double flanker is away from him. He's making it look as if he's pass protecting. The back checks through and watch him now come underneath with all his zone, has dropped off into the deep. Gay catches the ball runs very effectively with it and makes up about 12 of the yards that they lost on that penalty. And they'll be looking now at second down and 14 from the 31 of UCLA. 340 to go in the first half. Evans rolls and throws. Oh, gets away from one, gets away from two. And gets to the 30, maybe the 29. Oh, they'll mark it the 30. Pat Schmidt, number 88, came in to get a hold of him. But Raymond Burks had a shot at him. Frank Stevens had a shot at him. And Evans eluded both. Up until this game, Keith, uh, Vince Evans did not have any play, plays specifically de designed for him to run. He only ran in the event in the case like we just saw here where he was forced out of the pocket. But today, I understand, he does have a couple of plays that you might see him on bootlegs on. So let's watch for that later in the game. We'll be right back. How about a little beer talk? Does beer improve with age? What do you say? Definitely? Definitely not? Well, the Budweiser Brewmaster says not indefinitely. What he means is beer is aged only in the aging cellars at the brewery, not after it's been bottled. Besides, everything you've always wanted to know about aging, you'll find in a cold Beechwood aged Budweiser. Time after time after time. This is a cubic foot. There are five more of these inside the new Chevrolet than there are inside this year's older style full-size cars of Chevy's nearest sales competitor. That's based on U.S. government estimates of vehicle interior size as reported in the 1977 EPA Guide for New Car Buyers. The new Chevrolet with five more cubic feet of room. It stacks up beautifully. Now that's more like it. Just to bring you up to date on that situation in the Big 8 where there are still three games determining which team will win the Big 8 championship. Oklahoma State is leading 35-21 over Iowa State in the fourth quarter and an identical score. Colorado is now beating Kansas State 35-21 in the fourth quarter. 
Colorado's win ensures that there will be a three-way tie in that conference. If Oklahoma can beat Nebraska next Friday on ABC TV, then that will send Colorado to the Orange Bowl. But there is still a chance that it could be Nebraska if the Cornhuskers win that game. Keep third down, 12 yards to go for USC. Evans back to throw. Bruins get it. Couldn't find a man open. The people who made that play possible for the defense were the secondary people, the deep people who went back and covered up everybody in a crimson shirt that came their general direction. And so as a result, the Trojans are going to have to kick it away. Now, they were within field goal range, I think, but now they're going to be out of it because of that loss on the play. The longest field goal that Glenn Walker had kicked this year was 44 yards against Purdue. So now Glenn will go to the punt. And the Bruins really aren't interested in dropping anybody back. They drop one man back, but they figure that Walker's probably... Oh, he's got to go for the field goal anyway. And it is well, well short. You know, I really thought he was going to punt the ball. <laughs> well, I tell you, he had a little following wind to help him, but uh, again, the ball comes out to the 20-yard line. They may have tried with 222 to try to pin the Bruins back deep in their own territory. But, you know, the thing that's happened so far in this game is that the Trojans have had most of the breaks, and the Bruins haven't had too many up until uh, we played uh, 28 minutes almost of the first half. You've got to see some wrinkles out of that, uh, that punt and or kick formation before this day is done because I know yeah. both teams have been working on it. All right, it's first down Bruins at the 20-yard line. And finally getting the ball back, USC held on to that ball for about seven minutes. Now the Bruins get it back. Walt Underwood steps in there to make the defensive play as Theotis Brown carried for UCLA. He gained on the play four yards, make it second down and six, and you've got two minutes to go in the first half. Dankworth keeps it, turns it up, gets across the 30. That'll be a first down for the Bruins. Good Gary running. Jeter, 79, did not take the fake at all. Got his man. Jeff did a good job of running that time. Dankworth, he uh, had two men on him, and he was able to shake loose and make good positive yardage. Of course, he's, he's had quite a year. He already has 730 yards and 125 carries. So he's had a sensational year. He's passed for about... 55% uh, and uh, again he demonstrated his running ability on that last play. Third down and three from the 27. Give that ball to Wendell Tyler and Tyler one of the quickest starters you'll ever see in your life shoots it over the 30 yard line to the 32. Looks like he's hanging in there pretty good with that shoulder problem that he has uh, and again if, if one were to know that he could not catch a pass that could uh, help the defense immensely. I wonder if the Trojans actually have, have that in mind, the fact that uh, Wendell Tyler, Tyler can't get his arm up uh, to be a good pass receiver. Time running down now, and the Bruins are not spending timeouts to stop it. Clock being allowed to run. Dankworth keeps it, fakes it outside, turns it up, and goes from the uh, about the 32 and a half up to near the 38-yard line. And Thursday night, the annual war between A&M and Texas in Austin. Regional college football over most of these ABC stations. You'll also see Appalachian State at East Carolina. And the Colgate Red Raiders, who had their unbeaten string spoiled last week by Army, will try to mess up Rutgers' bid for an undefeated season. We invite you to check your local listing for the game in your area. UCLA is a big university. More than 30,000 students are enrolled in its 13 schools and colleges. Here students begin the fascinating journey of discovery, possible at a great center of study, research, and cultural activity. From science to the arts, they develop those skills that will prepare them for their chosen professions and occupations, guided by an outstanding faculty. UCLA's fine library, the largest research collection in the Southwest, offers students an outstanding academic resource. And it is probably the only university in the world where a student can walk out of an art class to see a Rodin in the midst of nearly 50 other major sculptures of the 20th century. When it is over, UCLA students look back on four or more years of intellectual growth and forward to the contributions they will make to society, whether in environmental science and engineering, education, art and music, or chemistry, or in one of the several professions they have trained for at UCLA. With 31 seconds to go in the second quarter, UCLA stays on the ground with it. 
Apparently just going to run out the clock as Wendell Tyler bangs it up across the line of scrimmage going for the first down. That will stop the clock if he got the first down, and he did as they move the change. Now, if the Bruins are quick enough with 26 seconds to go, they'll be able to come to the line of scrimmage and probably get two more plays, possibly three if they elect to choose. Homer Butler, 82, comes in now at a wide receiver position for UCLA. He represents great speed. Wally Henry comes left. So they've got their two flyers ready to go. Ten seconds. Dankworth pitches. It's a reverse. Here's Wally Henry setting up to throw. He's got Butler wide open. If he can get it to him, he does oh, not get it to him in time. Dennis Thurman comes back to break up the play. Super recovery by Thurman on that play. What a play. Well executed offensive play, and Thurman saved the day. Well, Terry Donahue went into his playbook to get that one with three seconds remaining. The Bruins will have one more shot at it as the little man, Wally Henry, came around and threw the ball beautifully, but he just could not throw it that far. Here it is. Here's the replay. It's a real gadget with Henry coming around from behind. Look at him put this ball up in the air. He really lets it go. And of course, Thurman comes across. Here we are back to action again. Last play of the first half as Theotis Brown takes it into the line and time has run out. And so at the end of the first half of play, the score, the Southern California Trojans 7, UCLA Bruins nothing. Here is Jim with Coach John Robinson. Coach John Robinson, check the watch with the officials. A little defense in this first half. Well, it, you know, it seems to me like the score should be 21 to 14 or something. The ball's going up and down, down the field, but uh, I think that is a sign of really great defense on both parts. I think both teams have good offense, and the other team really can't stop them, but is making a lot of key plays. So I, I think uh, it really is a great defensive effort on both sides. Ricky Bell seems 100% to you? Well, he's not 100%, but he, he's able to run inside fairly well. I, we just don't feel like he can make some of the cuts outside, but... I, uh, yeah, he's playing 100% with his heart. I know that. You think he'll do anything offensively that'll be different in the second half? I hope we'll score. <laughs> that'll be different. <laughs> Dennis Thurman did it for you. Yeah, that's we've, we've worked on that play all year. See all right. <laughs> Coach John Robinson of Southern Cal. We'll be back with the Fireman's Fun Flashback and other halftime activities from the Los Angeles Coliseum right after this word from one of our sponsors. We put this car inside a cold chamber for 12 hours at 30 degrees below zero protected by Texaco's antifreeze and coolant. Did it work? Watch. For test purposes, we modified the cooling system slightly, so you can immediately see it didn't freeze up even at 30 below. No other antifreeze of this type protects better against freeze-ups. So ask for Texaco's antifreeze and coolant, or pick up the new do-it-yourself jug. Saturday, Holmes and Yo-Yo get a flat. Get a shot. Get busted, get kidnapped, and get a big charge. Then it's what's happening. I'm going to be on TV doing commercials. Free Run tries to become the face that sells a billion burgers. I'm about to be rich and famous. You're going to be the center photo for this much fat boy magazine? Right after Holmes and Yo-Yo. Tonight on ABC. Coliseum, Southern Cal with a 7-0 halftime lead over UCLA. 
We want to remind you once again about Thursday night, Thanksgiving night on ABC. Most of the country will be seeing Texas A&M in Texas. And of course, the Aggies of A&M won today, headed toward perhaps a 9-2 and two season, and they will very, very probably be in a bowl game. That is a great rivalry. Other parts of the country, much of it will be seeing Rutgers, a team with the longest winning streak in the country, an undefeated team, and also a very, very definite bowl possibility. Now on the field, the UCLA marching band. A solid gold sound on the direction of Kelly James. For the halftime show that features a repertoire of tunes from the jazz of Chuck Mangione and some Broadway sounds. Where's that yellow sheep? sounds that so many people will remember well from Summer Olympics in Montreal. The theme that is now known as Nadia's theme. Music used by the great Romanian gymnast Nadia Comaneci. Lovely, it's from Stevie Wonder's brand new album, Songs in the Key of Life. Today will be a look back at today's Ohio State-Michigan game. And for that, let's join Dave Diles in our studio in New York. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Uh, this is Dave Diles in New York. Uh, of course, half the Rose Bowl situation has been determined, Michigan having defeated Ohio State by a score of 22 to nothing. And like you, we're watching the UCLA-Southern Cal game to determine which team represents the Pacific 8 Conference. Ohio State and Michigan today on the Fireman's Fund Flashback, brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance. And Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent near you. Look for his name in the yellow pages. Well, the game today at Columbus, Ohio, and there was just one scoring threat in the entire first half. 
as these teams have met eight times in nine years with the Big Ten Championship and the Rose Bowl hanging in the balance. Ohio State's ball at the Michigan 11 and quarterback Jim Pacenta throws. But the Wolverines' Jim Pickens intercepts in the end zone. Michigan and Ohio State scoreless going into the locker room at the half. Then Russell Davis scoring for Michigan, a three-yard run, counting an 80-yard drive, and the Wolverines, after the point after, led 7 to nothing. And Woody Hayes, who sometimes will be talked into helping out the officials, claimed illegal procedure, but his advice was ignored. Russell Davis again after Michigan went 52 yards in eight plays, this time a three yards run, and he's just a second stringer for Bo Schembuckley's young men. Now on this play, Jerry Zuber, the holder for extra points, didn't hold it very long. He ran it instead. Bo planned this all the way. Ran it in for the two-point conversion. Michigan out in front, 15 to nothing. Now, midway, fourth period. Zuber, the wolf man on the defense, intercepts a percent of pass, and he runs it back to put the Michigan Wolverines into great field position. All right, Michigan smelling the Rose Bowl after Ohio State has gone there four years in a row. Second and goal from the three, and Rob Lytle, Michigan's All-America candidate, pushes it over for the touchdown. It's 22 to nothing. Lytle wound up with 165 yards and 29 carries. And later, an exuberant Bo Schembechler talked about the meaning of this victory for his Michigan Wolverines. This is one of the great football teams I've ever coached. Not so much because uh, talent, they have great talent, but um, they've been an easy team for me to coach. And uh, coming back from an operation like I did, uh, they cooperated fully. They did everything I asked. I've never been more proud of a team in my life. And I can assure you when we come to the Rose Bowl, we'll come to play. You're looking at one of the best known insurance signs, the fire hat of Fireman's Fund. But for the best deal, you should also know the sign of the man who sells our insurance. It's Oval, with an I, for your independent insurance agent. Independent because he represents not just Fireman's Fund, but many companies. So for the right insurance at the right price, sign up with your independent agent. He serves you first. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. Next week, the biggest three days of the NCAA football season. Kicking off Thanksgiving night with regional coverage headed by arch rivals Texas A&M against Texas. Friday opens with a big eight clash between Oklahoma and Nebraska. And then features Heisman Trophy candidate Tony Dorsett and top-ranked Pittsburgh in a primetime collision with Penn State. Saturday, two of the great traditional rivalries in sports. The Army-Navy game from Philadelphia followed by Notre Dame against third-ranked USC. We're back at halftime at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Southern Cal leading UCLA 7-0 in the battle to see which team will play the host role in the Rose Bowl this year. Now, some other scores from around the country that are equally important, many of them in determining bowl pairings. Colorado is beating Kansas State 35-28 in the fourth quarter. If Colorado can hold on, they have an inside track to the Orange Bowl. Michigan, 22 to nothing. Final score over Ohio State. Michigan will face the winner of this game in the Rose Bowl. Houston leading Texas Tech. Fifth ranked and undefeated Texas Tech, 17 to five in the second quarter. The winner of that game, it has an inside track to the Cotton Bowl. Maryland, the 28-0 winner over Virginia. The Terrapins wrap up the season at 11-0, and most speculation is that they will play in the Cotton Bowl also. And 10th-ranked Iowa State is now trailing Oklahoma State 35-21 in the fourth quarter. As we mentioned, around the country this afternoon, in locker rooms and in offices, a lot of decisions are being made about bowl pairings, which teams will be going to which bowl games. We have a man who is on the telephone, on a hotline to a lot of those different places. We feel that throughout the second half, we'll be able to give you updated information and firm up some of these bowl pairings, clear the air, and try to nail down some of the teams that'll be playing where between now and New Year's Day. And now let's listen to the Southern California Marching Band. Marching Band is directed by Dr. Arthur C. Bartner. A 
otherwise known as the Spirit of Joy, is the largest band in the school's history. The USC-UCLA game is being brought to you by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers who invite you to see and drive Chevrolet's totally new six-passenger car, the new Chevrolet. By Amphora Pipe Tobacco, imported from Holland, it's the Dutch touch that makes Amphora one of the world's most distinctive pipe tobaccos. By Texaco, on behalf of independent Texaco retailers who are working to keep your trust by offering top quality tires, batteries, and other accessories. And by the new J.C. Penny battery. It's the last battery your car will ever need. hurt a fan's favorite team. But of course, officials have to prepare mentally and physically for a game just as players do. Butch Lambert, one of the South Eastern Conference's top officials, provides us with some insight into the kind of preparation an official goes through. Uh, we start getting ready for our football games in uh, the months of the uh, latter part of June, the early part of July. We step it up, and in August, we keep running. And we do calisthenics and jogging, and then we do wind sprints because we have early September games, and uh, we feel like we have to start that early to get ready. So physically, we're ready. Now mentally, uh, we see the news, and we read the newspapers, and we know that games are important, and like this game here. Uh, we know this is a big game. We were in town last night, had dinner together. We talked football, had our pregame meeting this morning, and when we come out here this afternoon, there won't be a coach or a player any higher than we'll be. We'll be ready mentally. Officials are highly respected members in their communities, and they sacrifice much of their time and energies toward helping teams provide you with a memorable fall afternoon. They don't deny, desire your recognition, but they deserve your respect. The preceding message was brought to you on behalf of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Had something to do with it. Of course, if you believe that preparation, when it meets opportunity, produces luck, here's a perfect example of it. As the touchdown play came this way, Theotis Brown running through the line, a well-blocked play. The ball right there looks like pops loose when he bumps into one of his blockers. It flies into the hands of Dennis Thurman. Thurman goes 47 yards for the touchdown to give the Trojans the lead. There is a precedence for it because Thurman did it in 1974 when he picked one off and went 85 yards. 
for a touchdown. So that's the way the only scoring happened in the first half. Here is another look at it. Era Persigan, his comments. This is the uh, this is the other play here. This is the play where uh, I think it's Wally Henry. Yeah, this is the gadget that almost went for a touchdown just before the end of the half. The thing that's impressive here is the way Henry throws this ball. Throws it about 55 yards. He's throwing from the 35. And you'll watch here where Thurman, Dennis Thurman, comes over and makes a fantastic recovery. He was open. If the ball had been thrown a little sooner, that ball would have, that would have been a touchdown. It was a great, well-executed play, and the saving being done by both Thurman and Ron Bush. At one time, Homer Butler was as much as 15 yards in the clear on the play, but in order to get the reverse underway, it took enough time, and the ball was thrown high enough for Thurman to come back and knock it away. So that's what did happen in the first half, and that's what almost happened in the first half. It was a defensive battle with both teams. You look at the statistics, and we find both teams with nine first downs, and USC has 121 yards rushing or total offense, and UCLA has 120. Now, you can't get much more even than that. Although, possession-wise, the uh, Trojans had the ball for 16 minutes and 52 seconds, and UCLA 13.08. There's a little difference there. Plays, UCLA ran a few more plays, 34 to 31. All right, with the score 7-0, we're getting ready to play the second half. Here's Jim. And this is Coach Derry, Terry Donahue. Your team's been up and down the field in the first half and nothing on the board. Well, Jim, uh, you and I have been in this position before, and I'll tell you what, uh, we're trying awfully hard, and SC has a wonderful team, and we're fighting, and it just, uh, the one fumble, you know, really hurt us, but we'll handle that shift of momentum. I think we're going to do all right. Will you do anything differently? Not really. Uh, we're just going to try to play football UCLA style and see what happens. Wendell okay? Yeah, he's all right. He's uh, he's played the whole first half. He'll be all right. He's going to go as long as he can, and when he doesn't, we'll put somebody else in there and fight like a dog. <laughs> Thank you very much for spending time with us, Terry Donahue. Now let's go back upstairs to keep Jackson and Era Parsegan. It may be that he does bleed blue and gold. I don't know. Well, here we go now with Charles White, number 12, deep for the USC Trojans. He will hope to get his hands on the ball. Charles has not seen it so far today. Bernard Tarver, number 31, should be the other man back there with him as Frank Corral gets ready to kick it off. Traveler the third with Richard Sacco, and here's the kick. It's a knuckler. It goes dribbling down, and it does go to Charles White and drops it. Now he's got it at the two. He can fly. But the Bruins don't give him a chance. They knock him out of bounds up around the 22-yard line. Now, the USC starting backfield. An official rarely receives any attention from a fan unless he makes a mistake that might hurt a fan's favorite team. But of course, officials have to prepare mentally and physically for a game just as players do. Butch Lambert, one of the top Eastern Conference's top officials, provides us with some insight into the kind of preparation an official goes through. Uh, we start getting ready for our football games in uh, the months of the uh, latter part of June, the early part of July, we step it up, and in August we keep running, and we do calisthenics and jogging, and then we do wind sprints, because we have early September games, and uh, we feel like we have to start that early to get ready. So physically, we're ready. Now mentally, uh, we see the news, and we read the newspapers, and we know that games are important, and like this game here. Uh, we know this is a big game. We were in town last night, had dinner together, we talked football, had our pregame meeting this morning, and when we come out here this afternoon, there won't be a coach or a player any higher than we'll be. We'll be ready mentally. Officials are highly respected members in their communities, and they sacrifice much of their time and energies toward helping teams provide you with a memorable fall afternoon. They don't deny, desire your recognition, but they deserve your respect. The preceding message was brought to you on behalf of the National Collegiate Athletic Association had something to do with it. Of course, if you believe that preparation, when it meets opportunity, produces luck, here's a perfect example of it. As the touchdown play came this way, Theotis Brown running through the line, a well-blocked play. The ball right there looks like pops loose when he bumps into one of his blockers. It flies into the hands of Dennis Thurman. Thurman goes 47 yards for the touchdown to give the Trojans the lead. There is a precedence for it because Thurman did it in 1974 when he picked one off and went 85 yards 
for a touchdown. So that's the way the only scoring happened in the first half. Here is another look at it. Eric Persigan, his comments. This is the uh, this is the other play here. This is the play where uh, I think it's Wally Henry. Yeah, this is the gadget that almost went for a touchdown just before the end of the half. The thing that's impressive here is the way Henry throws this ball. He throws it about 55 yards. He's throwing from the 35, and you'll watch here where Thurman, Dennis Thurman, comes over and makes a fantastic recovery. He was open. If the ball had been thrown a little sooner, that ball would have, that would have been a touchdown. It was a great, well-executed play, and the saving being done by both Thurman and Ron Bush. At one time, Homer Butler was as much as 15 yards in the clear on the play, but in order to get the reverse underway, it took enough time, and the ball was thrown high enough for Thurman to come back and knock it away. So, that's what did happen in the first half, and that's what almost happened in the first half. It was a defensive battle with both teams. You look at the statistics, and we find both teams with nine first downs, and USC has 121 yards rushing or total offense, and UCLA has 120. Now, you can't get much more even than that. Although, possession-wise, the uh, Trojans had the ball for 16 minutes and 52 seconds, and UCLA 13.08. There's a little difference there. Plays, UCLA ran a few more plays, 34 to 31. All right, with the score 7-0, we're getting ready to play the second half. Here's Jim. And this is Coach Derry, Terry Donahue. Your team's been up and down the field in the first half and nothing on the board. Well, Jim, uh, you and I have been in this position before, and I'll tell you what, uh, we're trying awfully hard, and SC has a wonderful team, and we're fighting, and it just, uh, the one fumble, you know, really hurt us, but we'll handle that shift of momentum. I think we're going to do all right. Will you do anything differently? Not really. Uh, we're just going to try to play football UCLA style and see what happens. Wendell okay? Yeah, he's all right. He's uh, he's played the whole first half. He'll be all right. He's going to go as long as he can, and when he doesn't, we'll put somebody else in there and fight like a dog. <laughs> Thank you very much for spending time with us, Terry Donahue. Now let's go back upstairs to keep Jackson and Eric Parsegan. It may be that he does bleed blue and gold. I don't know. Well, here we go now with Charles White, number 12, deep for the USC Trojans. He will hope to get his hands on the ball. Charles has not seen it so far today. Bernard Tarver, number 31, should be the other man back there with him as Frank Corral gets ready to kick it off. Traveler the third with Richard Sacco, and here's the kick. It's a knuckler. It goes dribbling down, and it does go to Charles White, who drops it. Now he's got it at the two. He can fly. But the Bruins don't give him a chance. They knock him out of bounds up around the 22-yard line. Now, the USC starting backfield will look like this. Vince Evans at quarterback, number eight, played the entire first half at that position. Ricky Bell, the entire first half at tailback, number 42. Dave Farmer Hurt is out of the ball game with Moshe Tatupo in there, and Shelton Diggs, number 26, is the flanker. Here are the Trojans, first down from the 22, leading seven to nothing. Keith Jackson along with Eric Parsikin and Jim Lampley. It is Ricky Bell at tailback. And he is the kind of a running back who just gets stronger and stronger as the day wears on. Stopped at the 29-yard line. Here are the big guys up front doing the work. Simran, he doesn't get in the heavy traffic, but Otis Page certainly does. And Brad Buddy, the freshman guard, and Pat Howell, the other guard, and Gary Bethel at center, and Donnie Hickman, who's one of the best pulling guards in the country, Marvin Powell, a powerhouse at tackle, and Bill Gay is the big tight end. It is second down and three yards to go. Vince Evans to throw. Looks for Simran. Throws. It's intercepted. It is intercepted. It was tipped by one man and picked off by Pat Smith. And now the Bruins get the break. The kind of break I think they've been looking for early in the third quarter. They had very few breaks. And here's the replay of this. Evans makes a run action, fake the bell, keeps the ball, and they only catch. Sheldon Biggs at Simran. Randy Simran, he was just trying to hit on an out pattern. It was a very fine interception. At the 44-yard line of Southern California, UCLA gets the ball. That's the first Southern Cal turnover in the ball game. Dankworth sets the throw. Throws for Henry. Overthrows him. Wally Henry never looked back until he reached the neighborhood of Ricky Odom over there, and then they ran together, and the ball was overthrown. Dankworth, the quarterback, a good left look at handsome Jeff from Reno. Wendell Tyler, Theotis Brown of the running backs, and your flanker, come on down to Wally. Wally Henry. 
Not too big, but he makes a lot of noise. If you remember the Rose Bowl of a year ago. And this game today decides the Western team in the Rose Bowl. Michigan having defeated Ohio State 22-0 earlier. It is second down and 10. Henry wide right. Pass batted away. Now, number 79 came blistering in for the Southern California Trojans, Gary Jeter. Up front, it's Don Patterson, 85, tight end. Gus Coppins, big tackle. Keith Eck, 57, is the guard, and a good one, Mitch Kahn, plays center. Right guard is Greg Taylor. Right tackle is Rob Kazarian, and Rick Walker, tight end. We haven't Williams. heard much from Walker today, but he's a he can run it. Back to throw. Dankworth over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Henry. He threw it into a crowd of enemies. Kind of surprised Keith on that drive. They had that interception at the 44-yard line. They went for the home run on the first play. Put the ball up three consecutive times when they were very close to four down area, and they they had been running adequately in the first half. I wonder whether or not this is going to be a pattern that they'll uh, follow in the second half. I tell you this, Dank was lucky to get away on that last pass he threw, not having it intercepted. As there were four Trojans all around Henry. Steve Bukic is in the pot now, and uh, he hits it up in the air, knuckleballed it. And it's bouncing around the 30-yard line. Now, I don't know what in the world that means. Whether Corral has hurt himself or whether they tried to put Bukic in there to uh, get the Trojans guessing that he might either run or throw. He is the backup quarterback. He went ahead and punted the ball dreadfully 16 yards. Well, I, uh, that was kind of a surprise there. The ball, when he, when he laid the ball out to position it for the punt, the nose was way up. And... Uh, he got the wrong part of the ball, and of course, a very weak punt. At the 28-yard line, first down, Southern California. So they really didn't lose that much except a little time, but they have the lead. Time's on their side, and there is Ricky Bell. And on that play, he looks awfully healthy. Well, they look good. They faked the ball to uh, Tutupu inside. Of course, the linebackers held for it, and Bell got leverage to the outside with good blocking. They pulled the guards to do the blocking, and it was a well-executed play. And the Trojans are cooking first down at the 42-yard line. Bukic has punted previously. If you wonder, that was the first time. He hit three earlier in the season for a 28-yard average. Maybe they wanted the knuckleball out of him. They got it, but it was a little bit short. Tatupu trying to spin off the line of scrimmage and get to the outside. May have lost a little on the play. Number 41, Frank Stevens came across to help Harold Harden put him down. You know, it's 6'2", 188 pounds. That Frank Stevens has had some kind of year for the UCLA Bruins. He's had eight sacks this year. I remember when I saw him in the opening part of the year, I mentioned to you, Keith, that I wondered how this guy was going to hang in there, and you said, <laughs> you watch him. Yeah, he's a good <laughs> and, player. And I have. <laughs> Dave Farmer is now in, back in at the fullback position. Started, hurt his leg, has come back now. On second down and nine, it's Bell behind Farmer's block. Ricky Bell at the 46, maybe seven yard line before he is shoved out by Raymond Burks of UCLA. Looked like it was gonna be a big play, but it wasn't as big as we thought. Uh, they ran him out of bounds. And upstairs, it looked like he was gonna crack it for 10 or 15 yards. Ricky Bell, of course, was a prime Heisman Trophy candidate, and the balloting, I guess, is not yet official. But most everybody out in this part of the country has conceded that trophy to Tony Dorsett of Pittsburgh because of Ricky Bell's injury, which took him out of three games, really. Third down, they need five. Evans pass, thrown short, pass complete to the fullback farmer coming out of the backfield. He's knocked out of bounds by Oscar Edwards, but it's a first down for Southern California. So it looks like Dave Farmer has shaken off the injury that took him out of the ball game very early. Yeah. Oscar Edwards uh, came up to support on that. No one was in the flat that time until the ball was thrown, and you could see from upstairs it was going to be a completion. I think it might have been a, a defensive error on the part of uh, UCLA. Ball is just short of the UCLA 45-yard line. First down, USC. Evans to Bell. Throws it up the middle. Ricky's heading for 100 and more the way he's running today. He got about eight on that, that carry. 
There's a little stat that I think is important. On first downs, USC is averaging 4.7, and of course, with that uh, latest uh, run by Bell, you'll see that it's over five now. UCLA is only averaging 2.7 on first down play, so there may be a pretty good difference. Bell is really a strong football player. I mean, he can read daylight well, and of course, he's as healthy as uh, <laughs> we, we thought he might not be, but he certainly is. Got it again. There's the difference with a Ricky Bell running out of that tailback position and being able to read the position that he wants to take or the route he wants to take. When he sticks his head in there and gets to a full head of steam, when people hit him, they very often bounce. Let's watch Jerry Robinson. Jerry Robinson's a linebacker. He's had a great year for the Bruins, flowing with it. This is a mark of this uh, UCLA ball club. They've got tremendous team speed, both on offense and defense, and particularly defensively. Jerry got him. But he couldn't turn him back, and it's first down, Southern California, at the UCLA 29-yard line. Trojans are moving. It's handed off short to Dave Farmer, the fullback, and he goes to the 20-yard line. Gain of about nine yards. So good. Up front blocking by the Trojans, and that time they nullify this man, number 42, Yasusopo. That doesn't happen very often, I'll tell you that. He's a strong... They're driving him back off the line. That's probably the first time that I've seen in all these games that we've done the Bruins that he hasn't been in on a play. But they really didn't put him away at that, did they? Well, I think that was Otis Page on him, wasn't it? Yeah. Second down and one from the 20. It's Bell. He's got a first down at about the 18, maybe 17, before he is thrown out. Now, you had a UCLA getting the ball, good field position, went through a very uncertain offensive series. And then suddenly, that was Charles White carrying on that last play 12 instead of 42. Bell comes back now. And then you had the 16-yard punt, which gave USC the ball in good field position. And since that time, the Trojans have really been taking it down the field with authority. Well, they have. They used White in there a couple of plays. And, of course, Ricky Bell is reminiscent of O.J. Simpson. He's durable. He's got excellent speed. He's a little bigger than O.J., and he can go all the way just like O.J. could. But he can carry the ball 40, 50 times and still hang in there. There he is this again. Is Penalty flag goes down as Ricky Bell takes it over the left side down to about the 12-yard line. Let's see how the penalty goes. Charles White standing on the sidelines with the coaching staff now beginning to alternate a little bit with uh, Ricky Bell at tailback, and you've got to get a holding call here against USC, which is going to back him up 15 yards in the second quarter. A holding penalty stopped what appeared to be an offensive thrust that might pay off for them, and here they get hit again. Those are tough penalties to take. You know, you get down inside that 20-yard line and a 15-yard penalty. Here they're moving the ball from the 12. They're down to the 12-yard line. Now they're going to come back to about the 27, I think. A little farther than that, I guess, from the line of scrimmage. It's back to the 31. Those are tough penalties, tough to make up. Four calls against the Trojans now for 51 yards. UCLA one flag for 15 yards. Ball is outside the 31-yard line where it's first down for Southern California. Let's see if Evans puts it up here. Uh, that tight end pass or that delay by the tight end has been very successful. Let's see if he sprints out here. First down and a, just a little less than 25. It's exactly that. Pressure's on, passes away. It is intercepted and then dropped. The UCLA man had a hold of it, but Bill Gay, the intended receiver, then knocked it away from Oscar Edwards, number 21. Well, Gay just came off the line of scrimmage. You'll watch him here. Just trying to break to the outside pattern. If you watch Oscar Edwards comes in here, right on Gay, right in front of him, zoning the flat. The ball really is poorly thrown. Evans had thrown the ball over, you can see, over Oscar Edwards. He would have had uh, a completion. He threw the ball underneath, and it should have been an interception, but Oscar Edwards dropped it. Second down and right at 25. Simran wide right, along with Diggs. Evans to throw. Throws him short to Gay, and Gay drops it. Ball was thrown behind him. That was the same pass, that tight end delay. Fullback clears out, and uh, of course, uh, Evans sprints out to the right, waits for the clear out. All the linebackers drop back off, and then they try to dump the ball to the tight end. They've been very successful with that play, and uh, this time, of course, Bill Gay dropped it. 10 minutes and 19 seconds to play in the third quarter. And it is now third down for USC at the UCLA 31-yard line. 
Trojans are two for seven on third down conversions. They've got to go inside the Bruins seven to get the first down. That's Diggs in motion. Evans gives the ball to the tailback. Ricky Bell gets to the 25, and there he stops. Now you'll get the field goal unit coming on. Rob Hurdle to hold, Glenn Walker to kick. His longest kick so far this season, 44 yards. He did it against Purdue. Now this will be about a 43-yarder. Looks like it, 42, 43-yarder. 42, I think. Does all the kicking for him. He's a very talented guy, Glenn Walker. Punting, extra points, field goals. Here it is. Big field goal. Nine minutes and 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. USC builds its lead to 10 nothing. 42 yard field goal. We Dutch are great on tradition. There's 200 years of it behind this. Amphora, one of the world's most distinctive pipe tobaccos. It's a blend of the world's most compelling, full bodied, mellow tobacco. Amphora, still so right for today. You can smell it, taste it, feel it. It's the Dutch touch, only in Amphora. The new Quintrix 2 color picture tube from Panasonic brings you a very lifelike picture. Because Quintrix 2 is our new inline picture tube with an extra pre-focus lens that concentrates and focuses the electron beam to bring you Panasonic's sharpest picture ever. So lifelike, you may even feel you're part of the picture. Quintrix 2. One more reason Panasonic is just slightly ahead of our time. Next Friday night on ABC, we have a very, very special program. With me right now is Ron Howard. Actually, it's a benefit for the Variety Club. There were an incredible number of stars there. Henry Winkler was there. I was there. Jimmy Stewart, Sammy Davis Jr., Charles Bronson. Uh, uh, Henry Fonda was in the audience. Tom Bosley was there. Lee Van Cleef, Ben Johnson. And, and it was an incredibly emotional experience for me to be a part of it. It, it was a great tribute to a, a great man, and I might add that Frank Sinatra hosted it. <laughs> well, we'll be looking forward to it. It's also from 8 to 9 next Friday night, the hour immediately preceding our telecast of Pitt Penn State. Ron, I hope you get home in time to see it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back up to Keith Jackson. Nine minutes and 41 seconds to go in the third quarter now as you look down from the Goodyear Glimp Columbia with Corky Bellinger. At the controls and Archie Griffin providing the picture. Some of the morning haze now beginning to clear up a little bit. We've had an absolutely gorgeous week of weather throughout the California area. Really beautiful. All right, here's the kickoff. And the deep men for UCLA are Theodos Brown and Wally Henry. USC leading by a score of 10 to nothing. because that football was not kicked very high. I didn't think it would get that deep, but it just hung up there and kept going. He had a lot of power on it. Here the Bruins are going to have to start and go 80 yards again. That great opportunity they had at the beginning of this first uh, or third quarter uh, where they put the ball up three times was probably the best field position they've had all day. Now they've got to go 80 again. That's a hard row. They've also got to do something here to get a little bit of as we want to say, momentum on their side of the field. First down from the 20. Dankworth hands it off to Theodos Brown. Straight ahead, gets three. Second and seven coming. 25 years ago, most high schools sponsored two or three sports for boys. Today, the average school sponsors eight to ten for each sex. In a scholastic athletics, a positive influence on the lives of some five million participants each year. The National Federation of State High School Association urges your support of these expanding high school athletic programs. Second down seven from the 23 for UCLA. Dankworth gives the ball to Brown again. He's to the 25, maybe just across it. Walt Underwood, 95, knocks him down. You know, Keith, uh, discounting the first game that the Trojans played, which was the Missouri contest where they gave up about 46 points, they have averaged less than a touchdown in the last eight ball games, and without that first game score, 
uh, they would be leading the nation in uh, preventing uh, any scores. And now it is third down and four. Dankworth still got it. Gives it back to Brown. Brown is ripped behind the line of scrimmage by Ricky Odom. And so the Trojans beginning to build a full head of steam. We might note, too, that on the basis of what has happened so far in the previous 10 games for UCLA, they have been a very strong second-half team. But here they have been able to generate nothing against the Trojans in the second half. When you said they upended him, that's exactly what happened. He was really upended. He was, wasn't it? Dennis Thurman, number seven, the man who scored the touchdown. Frank Corral is in the punt, so I guess Frank's all right. They just wanted Rudy Bukic for the knuckleball. That snap almost got away. Corral's kick is tumbling into the hands of Thurman at the 34, and he's back to near the 40. 40 yards on that punt with 7.48 to go in the third quarter, and the Trojans lead it 10 to nothing. You know, it used to take 43 Marth Rome beer baseball cards to get one Carl Ferrilla. So I was surprised when the light beer people called me to do this commercial. I mean, I do drink light beer, and it tastes great. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. But, you know, I'm kind of worried, because if I do for light beer what I did for baseball, I'm afraid their sales might go down. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hi, I'm Beverly Sills, and I'm doing what I often do on a Saturday afternoon when I'm not singing in an opera. I'm listening to an opera, to Texaco's live broadcast from the Metropolitan. Opera needs support, and Texaco's been helping by bringing these Metropolitan broadcasts into millions of homes all over America for 36 years. Now, isn't that a beautiful Texaco station? at the 38-yard line. And there's a reason for the Southern California side of the field to be flying high because the Trojans lead 10-0 and they have the ball. And they have had so far in this third quarter control of the game. Double flankers. Now it's Diggs coming back toward the snap of the ball in motion. The pitch is to the tailback. Ricky Bell short of the line of scrimmage. Good defensive penetration that time by Raymond Burks, number 87. First man to get him for UCLA. That uh, whole left side of the line neutralized their blocks, flowed with the ball, and uh, that was a perfect execution of defensive football. And they, they, they need that to get that ball back if they're going to get back in the ball game. Loss is back to the 37-yard line where it is second down, 11, USC. Mike Robinson, number 16, wide left with Diggs. Evans gives to Bell. Ricky is hit right at the line of scrimmage by Manu Tuya Sosopo. Final scores reflected from the eastern part of the country. Duke and North Carolina had a wild thing today, didn't they? Oh. Sure did, 39-38. Clemson closing. And Mississippi State beating Ole Miss in the finale. Kentucky upsetting Tennessee. Ran past Rice, convincingly. It is third down, 11 for USC. Evans to throw. Passes over the middle. Did he catch it? Robinson. They give it to him at midfield. And it'll be just enough for a first down. And the Bruins are hollering about it. Let's take a look at it and see whether or not he caught the ball off the ground. Here comes uh, Simran. Here, now we're going to see the back. Oh, no, it's not. It's uh, Robinson. Robinson. Let's see from the back here whether we can tell. Oh, boy, that's tough to tell. Let's see. I don't know. Hard to tell. Midfield, first down, Trojan. Goes to the first man out of the eye formation, the fullback to Tupu. And he's got three yards. Evans now seven out of 11 for 81 yards in the ball game. Other scores reflected, most of them finals. Wisconsin beating Minnesota. And Illinois trounced Northwestern with Notre Dame doing a pretty good job on Miami. Colorado beat Kansas State 35-28. Buffaloes with a good chance to get a claim on that spot in the Orange Bowl. 
Kansas jumped all over Missouri, 41 to 14. Surprise. Second down, and let's call it eight yards to go at the Bruin 47-yard line. The handoff is to the tailback, and there is nothing for him as Frank Stevens, number 41, was the first man to get there wearing blue. Tom Murphy, 51, in to help him. And Texas A&M had another big day as they beat TCU 59 to 10. So Texas A&M figures they ought to be in a bowl, I'm sure, and they probably will be. Oregon State and Oregon in one of the traditionals out west at halftime. Craig Ferdig, who is a quarterback at Southern California, is the coach at Oregon State. Of course, that score we've already given. Third down, nine yards to go now from the 49-yard line of UCLA. Evans, oh, look out. He gets his pass away. Intended for Bell, but Dave Morton, number 64, really planted it. Well, they're trying a little throwback screen that time to Bell. But, uh, he overthrew Bell on his short side. And so the Bruin defense holds the Trojans, and now Southern California will send Walker in with the ball at the Bruin 49-yard line. Severn Reese and Mike Coulter are deep for UCLA, standing back around the 15-yard line. Snap is good to Walker. Shanked it, but gets a decent kick out of it. Takes a Southern Cal roll, and now Henry, Severn Reese it is, decides to field it at the eight-yard line, and he is just flattened. Well, this will be the poorest field position of the ball game for either team. UCLA starting first down at its own eight-yard line as Severn Reese fielded the ball. Jeff Dankworth hands it to the big right halfback, Theotis Brown, who takes it out to about the 12-yard line. Now, the Bruins in their possessions of the ball game have started reasonably well. I guess the worst start they had was a 17-yard line. And now suddenly they have to back up on the eight-yard line. They have gained nine yards, however, in the second half, which will tell you something about USC's domination. And the Trojans have held on to the ball here in the third quarter, eight minutes and three seconds compared to the Bruins' 2.15. And you have 4.11 to go. Now running. Dankworth again gives it to Theotis Brown. Brown gets up to about the 15-yard line before he is thrown back. And now they'll be looking at a third down and four. They've got an awful long way to go. They've had tough field position, but the Trojans, of course, have blended both their offense and defense as well. When the offense is in there and they maintain possession of the uh, possession of the ball, they're running that clock down. And of course, by the same token, putting the Bruins in bad field position when they have to punt it. Third down and four with SC leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Tankworth gives it this time to Tyler. And Wendell is stopped short of the first down. Walt Underwood, 95, had a hold of him. So they'll have to kick, and they will kick into a light breeze. Not much of a wind at all, but perhaps enough to hang the ball a little bit if Corral gets the nose up. Well, they've had a tough time in the second half. They really haven't had any opportunity to operate outside of the possession they had after that interception. Now it looks like the Trojans might get good field position again. You would think here too, Era, that uh, they'll probably peel back and try to affect the return. At least you would think that from this particular field position. Let's see what they do. I think you're right. It looks like they got a return on. Descending. Uh oh, look at here. Three-man rush. Kick is away by Corral. Low liner. Thurman fumbles it, and that takes away the drama. As he has to come back to the 38-yard line to get a handle on a 39-yard punt by Frank Corral. The play was set up well enough and the punt was low enough to give Thurman a chance but Dennis a little anxious perhaps did not field it cleanly now with 240 to go in the third quarter Southern California gets the ball again in pretty good field position they're on 38 Thurman used good judgment that time he didn't try to pick it up and run with it because it would have been the kind of break that uh, the Bruins needed but he just recovered the ball and got it back Vince Evans stays at quarterback the Tufu and Bell behind him, and it's Bell. Frank Stevens, 41, their first for UCLA. Gain to the 41, three yards. Frank Stevens is all over the place. Otis Page, tackle, hobbling out of there. He'll have to be replaced. Number 70 going in for USC, Rick Miller, offensive tackle. Haven't seen Charles White much today. Still think we might see that freshman speech to just one carry to the best of my knowledge that, uh, he was in just a series of downs uh, ago I believe it was 
Second down, seven from the 41. Evans throws it out. And on the bootleg, may have picked up a first down. That's what we were talking about earlier. That was a pre-designed bootleg that time. And uh, it's the first time that uh, the Trojans have shown that. I was talking to Dave Levy, formerly of the USC staff, and he told me that uh, there'd be just a few new things. And as I mentioned earlier, there were no design plays by the Trojans to have Evans run up until this game. And he did what he wanted. He got his first down, stopping the clock with 1.56 to go third quarter. First down, Trojans, their own 49-yard line. And some of you may think you've been having a little trouble with your television set. It's not. It's some telephone company problems, apparently, causing some breakup and some freezing of the picture around the country. Folks are working on it, trying to straighten it out. Here is Ricky Bell. And he's back in Bruin country as he gets to the 47-yard line before Frank Stevens again makes the tackle for UCLA. <laughs> Stevens was blocked on his back and still made the tackle. He reached up with his left arm and uh, managed to trip up uh, Ricky Bell. Next Friday on ABC Sports. I want to talk about that one in a minute, considering the fact that Colorado was a winner today in the Big 8 conference. Second down, seven. Short man, fullback to Tupu. Look at Mosi battle, and he may have his first down as he got very close to the 40-yard line. A pretty, pretty cute little play that they used there. The quarterback reverse pivots and gives the ball to Tupu, and the right guard pulls. They block down with a tackle in the end, but Ricky Bell goes away with it, and the linebackers have a tendency to flow with Bell, and they've been getting good yardage on that play. Next Friday, Oklahoma, Nebraska, a ball game that'll have a great deal of meaning on what ultimately happens in determining the Orange Bowl representative out of the Big 8 Conference, 2 Eastern, 1 Central, over most of these ABC stations. Then at 9 Eastern time, Pittsburgh and Penn State, as the Panthers try to lock up number one in the country, head for the Sugar Bowl against Georgia. It is Ricky Bell. Ricky Bell running inside with power. From just outside the 40, he takes it inside the 35 to the 33. And Bell now goes over 100 yards. Ricky with 23 carries and 106 yards. Sit up here and watch him. You don't realize that he's got 100 yards. 106 yards and 23 carries. But he's strong, and of course he can carry it 50 as he has this year. Of course, he won't carry it that many times in this ball game, but he's up to 23 already. Time winding down, third quarter. Trojans dominating the game here in the second half, leading 10 to nothing. It's Bell. It's first down as Ricky on second down and two just blew it over the right side, running behind Donnie Hickman and Marvin Powell. And the football is put down at the UCLA 26-yard line where the Trojans have it first down. Frank Stevens again. Even though he was blocked on the play, he managed to make the play. Clock ticking. I don't believe we'll have another play, and we will not. After three quarters, it is USC 10, UCLA nothing. Put your foot down. Sixth football game between USC and UCLA. The Pacific Eight Conference Championship at stake. The Rose Bowl spot at stake. Perhaps even a national championship here, depending on what happens down the road for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Three quarters. It is USC 10, UCLA nothing. Put your foot down. This 46th football game between USC and UCLA, the Pacific Eight Conference Championship at stake, the Rose Bowl spot at stake, perhaps even a national championship here, depending on what happens down the road for the Pittsburgh Panthers. First down, Southern California at the UCLA 26-yard line. Playing power football. They send the tailback, Ricky Bell, around right in, getting a tremendous block from Dave Farmer, who nailed Raymond Burke, sending Ricky Bell inside the 20, down to the 13-yard line, where it's first down Trojan. Well, he just gets stronger as the game goes on. That third quarter was all uh, 
the Trojans, they had eight first downs to none for UCLA, 105 yards to 13. No question about the dominance of, by the Trojans over the Bruins in that third period. Possession football, just keeping it. You don't have the ball, you can't do much about the way things are going. Evans back to throw. He's going for Simran. It is batted away, and a penalty flag is thrown against the Bruin defender, Levi Armstrong. Well, the Bruins have been uh, yelling about <laughs> this whole ball game. They have not gotten along terribly well with the official corps. Oh, I don't know. Uh it looked like a great save from up here. It looked like uh, Levi Armstrong got his arm in there, but he couldn't see his his other arm, whether or not he grabbed on to Simran. So it is first and goal to go for Southern California, just inside the one-yard line, one yard away, a little less than that, for a touchdown that could give him a 17 to nothing lead. The UCLA partisans down in that territory are not going to make it comfortable for the Trojans. Well, I've had a little experience with that myself out here, Keith. <laughs> defense! Defense! We haven't had an official defense! number on the crowd as yet, but I suspect we do have our 90,000. At least it looks like it. Even the Peristyle Inn is filled. It's John Robinson on the sidelines, and now we look down on it, and you can see just how filled this... Old structure is built in 1932 when Los Angeles hosted the Olympic Games. First and goal to go, Trojan. And Vince Evans will have no part of it. He does not want a mistake here. He wants that six. Well, he's asked for discretionary timeout on two occasions now. It may be that the referee might tell him now that uh, to go ahead because they're not going to control the crowd noise. Plus, he's, he's absolutely right. There's no sense in having an exchange problem or a fumble as a result of the crowd influence. And uh, he's been instructed properly to look to the referee and try to get a discretionary timeout, which he has received on two occasions. Only the crowd noise gets loud. The officials asking the crowd to quiet down. And they're going to give him another opportunity. Now the referee walks in. You see him there with a white cap indicating that uh, he's going to charge UCLA with a timeout. So the UCLA partisans raising Kane in the end zone would not give USC a sufficient opportunity to snap the ball in the judgment of the referee. And as a result, he calls a timeout against the Bruins. And 14-49 to play in the game, and the Trojans lead it 10-zip. Now we understand that Harold Harden of UCLA called a timeout, and it's a very precious call because the Bruins, I would think, would need all the times out they have remaining. It is now first and goal once more for USC. They'll try to get the play off inside the Bruin one. Give it a bell, touchdown. Well, the crowd noise didn't bother him. He took it in behind the strong side of Donnie Hickman and Marvin Powell. John Robinson and the Trojan coaching staff and his teammates welcoming everybody back to the sidelines as the kicking team is now on. With 14.47 to go in the ballgame, Glenn Walker in the kick out of Rob Hurdle's hole to make it 17-0. That's exactly what happens as Walker's kick is off the money. 17-0 USC. Here's Jim. And as Southern Cal appears to take another step toward the Rose Bowl, let's get up to date on some of the other bowl pairings around the country. First of champions of the Atlantic Coast Conference, they will apparently play Houston. Now, we say apparently. Houston is winning big this afternoon over Texas Tech. So we'll give them the inside track for the Southwest Conference Championship. However, the Cougars must defeat Rice next week. Houston, of course, will be heavily favored over Rice. If they can win it, they'll be in the Cotton Bowl against Maryland. Keith? On the kickoff, the return comes outside the 30, and a 
double handful of laundry goes down on the field. 18 yards on the return. You get a face mask call against Southern California. That'll advance the ball. An additional 15 yards for UCLA. The attendance, 95,019. That is a record crowd for the Coliseum at a college football game since they put in the new types of seats. The all-time record better than 105,000. The crowd today, 95,019. I guess that's the biggest college football crowd in the country this year. Now, the face mask penalty puts UCLA out at the 46-yard line. First down, great field position. They've got to get going, and they're not going to do it with that play. As Jeff Dankworth tried to turn it upfield, and Dankworth ran into Eric Williams, number 55. Looked like Gary Jeter might have been there, too. The uh, Trojans have been very impressive with the way they've handled the Veer. They've done a great job of changing up their defenses to keep the Bruins off balance. And uh, it's been very apparent during the course of this football game. Call it a three-yard pickup, make it second down and a long seven. Jeff Dankworth rolls around the throw, has time. Throws it short. Pass is deflected, I guess. It was either that or very poorly thrown. It was in, looked like David Lewis might have slapped it away. Well, I think he was just trying to unload the ball. He had nobody open on the play, and he was trying to save it down. Not a down, but uh, negative yardage. And uh, at least they come up with third down and eight or seven rather than uh, being tackled for a loss. Now Rich Dimmler comes in at the nose guard position, replacing Harold Steele. Dimmler is the bigger of the two, so they figure they can get perhaps a little more of a rush out of Dimmler, the bigger man. Obvious passing down, third down and a long seven. Trojans leading 17-0. The pass is thrown to the sidelines. Fought for uh -oh. intercepted by Rod Martin, I believe it is, the linebacker on that side of the field. The ball was up for grabs. Martin comes down with it, and Southern California is rolling. Martin's had some kind of year. He's recovered five fumbles. He dropped off as a weak side end, picked the ball off, and of course the Trojans have a great deal for this again. UCLA defense, which has been in the ball game most of the second half, has to come right back. You know, as big as the Trojans are, that Rod Martin is only about 6'2", 195. Watch the fight for the ball as uh, we'll get a chance to show it to you, but let's right now pay attention to the Trojans from the 36-yard line of UCLA. Evans gives to Ricky Bell. Bell to the 31-yard line. That's about four yards. Rod Martin is dropping off as a weak side end into that zone. And he deflects the ball here, tips it right there. Looks like it's going to get away from it, from him. Comes off the shoulder of the receiver, and he picks it off. And, of course, it's a great interception. Second down, call it short six from the 31 of UCLA. Evans gives it to Bell. Ricky is at the 25, tumbles to the 24. Oscar Edwards, 21, making the tackle for the Bruins. Shadows now covering the Trojan side of the field. And if Oscar doesn't make that tackle, Ricky's going to go a lot farther than he did on that play. He was had, had a lot of daylight out there. Time beginning to become a definite ally of Southern California with only 13.05 to play in the game. Bruins need to have something happen. Some kind of big break if they want to get back into this ball game. Robinson left, digs right for USC. First down inside the 25 of UCLA. Ball loose. Trojans cover it. Penalty flag. Thrown on the defensive side of the line, and there's some of the heartbreak that's beginning to well up on the UCLA side of the field. Well, this is the kind of game where the, the winner gets the big plum, the Rose Bowl, and a continuation of a great opportunity for the national championship. Pittsburgh, which is the number one team, and of course we're looking at the two and three team here. And uh, Pittsburgh still has a head Penn State, and of course Georgia and the Sugar Bowl is announced here a few moments ago. And USC hit with their third holding penalty of the game. Backs them up 15. Houston, as we understand it, jumped all over uh, Texas Tech today. Their Prudential College School Board will have the documentation of some of the traditional games around the country. Those Houston uh, Cougars may jump in there and claim that Southwest Conference Championship in their first year in the conference. <laughs> That'll be something, won't it? First down. 
at the 40. They've got to go just inside the 15 for the first down. Here goes Ricky Bell again. And Ricky is dragged down by number 86, Raymond Bell for UCLA. Let's take a look and see what kind of blocking they do on uh, Tuya Sasopo. He's actually veering down to the inside. He's stunning to the inside. Takes himself out of the play. Look at the left arm in there. Looks like a little holding going on in there. And uh, looks like they didn't catch him that time. They caught him the play before. Huh. <laughs> I think that's Otis. Is that Page? No. No, he's out. Uh, he's yeah, that's right. He's hurt. That's Powell, maybe. Just short of the 35-yard line. Evans rolling out. Going to carry it. Look out. Give him 36 yards and a touchdown. and 49 seconds to play in the game. The Trojans have command. Let's take a look and see whether or not this was a pre-designed play or whether he just scrambled out of there. It looks almost like it's pre-designed because he put the ball away immediately and he cuts it back against the grain here. Of course, then it becomes a foot race and the touchdown putting the Trojans ahead 24 to nothing. California Trojans leading 24 to nothing with 11 minutes and 49 seconds to play. Michigan defeated Ohio State 22 to nothing earlier today. Walker's kickoff is high and very deep to Wally Henry. And Wally will not return it. Gives me a chance to tell you about ABC's NFL Monday night game. Coming up next Monday, it'll be the Baltimore Colts down at the Orange Bowl against the Miami Dolphins. The Colts have a one-game lead in the American Football Conference Eastern Division. So that should be a very good one. Baltimore and Miami, 9 Eastern time, 8 Central over most of these ABC stations next Monday night. I'll tell you, a guy probably as happy with this uh, Trojan lead and going on to the Rose Bowl is John the Duke Wayne, who we mentioned earlier in the telecast with the show that will be coming up. How about these for stats, Keith? First downs in the second half, USC 12, UCLA none. Yards, USC 182, UCLA 16. Time called, it is charged, and the ball sits on the 20. UCLA owns it, first down. Trojans were short a man, had to spend the time out. Here's Jim. Okay, Keith, let's briefly update the Big 8 situation. As we told you, coming into this day, the Buffaloes beat Oklahoma State in Oklahoma. Keith? UCLA trying to get on track from the 20-yard line. The ball is handed off to Wendell Tyler. He squirts out to about the 25. It'll be second down and five. The Bruins now are going to have to play catch-up football, and they are a mile behind. They trail 24-0 era. I'm reminded in the spring that I thought USC might well be the best football team in the country. I said it again all season, despite the fact that Missouri beat them roundly in the opener, and today they have looked like the better team in the country, I'll tell you that, right. as they have just flattened the UCLA quarterback, Dankworth, back around the 16-yard line. It was Walt Underwood. It's an uphill battle, no question. You know, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame won big today against Miami. And next Saturday, we'll be right back here in the Los Angeles Coliseum for one of the great intersectional rivalries of all time, the Fighting Irish and the Trojans. So USC can hang on to this ball game. Then uh, it might well be uh, a special kind of a ball game next week over and beyond the normal emotions that go with it. Third down, and they need 14. Thankworth to throw it, can't find anybody, has to run for his life, and he's buried back on the 21-yard line. And now UCLA will have to kick it away. You know, the, uh, the Irish got 40 points on the board uh, this afternoon against the Miami Hurricanes. And one of the things that's interesting, as you were just discussing it, next week we may see the Gator Bowl 
uh, participant against the Rose Bowl participant here in, on Saturday afternoon. We will then know what has happened to Pittsburgh in its annual against uh, Penn State, too. So conceivably, the national championship might be involved in next Saturday afternoon's ball game. What happens Friday night will help in part determine that as Corral comes in to find it. He hit that one a mile. He just knocked the tar out of it. Thurman feels it, jukes a man, gets loose. Dennis Thurman comes back to the 39-yard line, and for a moment, it looked like he might have him split open and go. 54-yard putt and a 14-yard return. Putting and the Bruin side of the field has grown quiet. Punting has really been great in this ball game, with the exception, of course, of Bukic's uh, short punt. Outside of that, both uh, Corral and Walker have really been booming the ball. 39-yard line for Southern California. They're 39. They sit on a 24 to nothing lead. You'll see very little fancy stuff from here on. Just Ricky Bell. Bang, bang. He takes it up to about the 43, 42-yard line before he is brought down. Next week, of course, we have the annual between A&M and Texas on Thursday night. But again, to go back to the point, Pittsburgh plays Penn State next Friday night, which you will see here on ABC at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. That will come in the evening hours after you have seen Oklahoma, Nebraska in the daylight hours. And that will tell us much about what to anticipate from the Notre Dame-USC uh, game next Saturday afternoon here in the Coliseum. Left side of the Trojan line sure got off the ball awfully sharp that time, but they don't get a flag on, the, <laughs> on it. Yeah. And the advance of the ball is up to about the 44 with Mosi Tutupu, the fullback, carrying. And now you see we go inside nine minutes, Ara, and here's where it really gets tough and tight. You know, uh, the matchup between Wendell Tyler and Ricky Bell in the pregame discussions and evaluations uh, has now developed with Bell carrying the ball 31 times for 146 yards and Wendell Tyler with 12 carries for 37 yards. And you just wonder how healthy he was coming into this game. Well, we know, in fact, that his shoulder was strapped down, that he had a minor dislocation last week. Third down for the Trojans and five. And it is Dave Farmer, the fullback, first down outside the 40. He runs behind the strong side lineman. That's Hickman and Powell. And number 61 right there walking into the huddle. One of the best offensive guards I've ever seen. Seen the dominance of the big Southern California line. You've seen uh, them wearing down a very quick and strong defensive team, but not quite as big as the Trojans. And uh, it's apparent now that they've controlled the line of scrimmage, and particularly in the sec second half. At midfield. First down, it's Bell. Ricky Bell from the 50 to the 47. Here's Jim. Keith, as I mentioned earlier, Oklahoma, even if they win next weekend against Nebraska, cannot go to the Orange Bowl. The Sooners this afternoon, according to our telephone contacts, have accepted a bid to play in the Fiesta Bowl. And they will go, of course, play Wyoming, the winner of the WAC. Texas A&M, which won big today, has now accepted a bid to go play in the Sun Bowl. Their opponent is yet to be named. Sun Bowl played in El Paso. Second down, eight yards to go. It's Bell again. He's at the 46. Ball comes loose. And looks like the Bruins may have it. Bruins arguing they do, but I don't see a striped shirt pointing that way yet. And I don't reckon we're going to. Looks like the Trojans are going to keep the ball, or are they going to bring it back to where it was busted loose? Well, they called it ball dead there? Yep, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. You know, one of the things we've heard a lot about the bowl games here as we've been talking, I haven't heard anything about the Orange Bowl. Of course, the Big Eight winner and uh, who the competition is going to be. I would imagine that the UCLA Bruins will hear from the folks down in Miami. That's a, I haven't thought about that. Third down and eight yards to go as the play was blown dead prior to the fumble. Here's Evans back to put it up on third and eight. Wants to go deep. Diggs is out there. Got tangled up with one of the Bruin defenders. Looked like number two. Harold Harden was the man he bumped into, and he suddenly broke free, but by that time, the ball was committed, and it was too long for him to get to. Well, he made a great effort for it. Evans just overthrew him uh, a little bit. Great effort for it. Evans just overthrew him uh, a little bit. He was clean. With, uh, one of the few passes that Evans has thrown this afternoon that was uh, off the mark. All right, it brings up a fourth down for Southern California, and Glenn Walker is in the kick. 
Severn Reese and Michael Coulter are the deep men for the Bruins with six minutes and 35 seconds to play in the game. Big rush. And they did intimidate him some as it's a very short putt goes out of bounds as Walker shanked it. So a very short putt will give UCLA good field position with six and a half minutes to play and trailing 24 nothing. Resulted in a six yard kick by Glenn Walker looking ahead to next Thursday night Texas A&M and Texas Rutgers and Colgate Appalachian State and East Carolina regional games. And uh, here's Dankworth pitching the ball back to Wendell Tyler trying to get outside and he can't do it as Mario Salado is over there to get him and drag him down as he runs to the sideline stopping the clock at 626 830 Eastern Time A&M Texas and the other games check your local listings for the games in your area and we're waiting to see whether or not undefeated and untied Rutgers will get a bold bid and that'll get the folks excited in the state of New Jersey. If Rutgers should uh, suddenly wind up going off to a bowl. We know that there's been conversation uh, between the Peach Bowl people uh, about the possibility of inviting Rutgers and the Tangerine Bowl in Orlando about inviting Rutgers. Be fun to see him go to a bowl game. Second down. And, uh, that's close to a first down. You know, uh, in the early going, early part of the season, I didn't think Rutgers probably was uh, that good, but I think they have demonstrated both offensively and defensively and the opponents that they've played that they are a fine ball club. That's right. Wendell Tyler getting the first down for UCLA at the Southern California 48-yard line, and uh, that is the first first down of the entire second half for UCLA. Incredible as it may sound to you, that's so. They don't make a first down in the second half until we have six minutes to play in the final quarter. The pass over the middle. It was Wally Henry breaking in the open, but Dankworth's pass floated on him. He didn't zip it, and it got away incomplete. He'd been on target. Uh, UCLA would have been on the score with six. It was wide open coming over the middle. There he is. Henry, Wally Henry just comes up the field, breaks into the safety man's area is what we call a post and he's open he goes by the defensive safety man coming up to support now if the ball's on target here he's home free but it was overthrown by Dankworth and it's second down and 10 from the Southern California 48 yard line as Jeff has to put it up goes the sideline pattern hits Henry knocked out of bounds might have a first down on it it'll be very close to it he went out right about where the markers put down uh, around the 38 yard line it was a good route he knew right where the markers were and uh, Went right out at him. I don't know whether they're giving him a first down there or not, are they? I don't think so. It must be just an inch or so. Henry now three catches, 35 yards in the ball game. UCLA came into this game 9-0-1, only the tie with Ohio State at Columbus, 10-10, marring their record. The last time UCLA was shut out by USC was back in 1954. Third down and very short yardage. The play goes over the left side, and it's good for the first down to the Southern California 35-yard line. The statistics we just saw on the screen tell a story pretty much of the third quarter and into this fourth period, which is about uh, nine and a half minutes gone. But it's been a dominance by the Trojans in this third period. And as you mentioned, Keith, the first first down coming uh, past the midway mark in the fourth period shows the dominance of the... USC team. Let me correct my history. It was 1947 last time UCLA was shut out by USC 6 0. Bankworth gets in trouble as he's unable to deliver the ball to the trailing back Wendell Tyler. David Lewis makes the tackle. There was enough penetration that time by the USC defenders that they took away that trailing back. He had no chance to get it to him. Well, the answer regarding the Trojans also here, even though they had not seen the beer. Uh, unquestionably, uh, John Robinson and staff have done an outstanding job this year of preparing them uh, to stop it because they have done an excellent job defensively. Now the football is sitting at the Southern Cal 32-yard line. It is second down and about seven. Dankworth the throw. Throws it short. Ball carrier coming out of the backfield is Wendell Tyler making the catch. A penalty flag thrown back around where the quarterback was hit. And we may have a penalty coming here against the Trojans. 4.44 to go in a ball game. And now you have the conversation. And no, nope, looks like it might be against UCLA for holding. No, nope, no, no, no. It's personal foul. That's right. It's on the Trojans for roughing up the quarterback, Jeff Dankworth. 
I think it was Gary Jeter, number 79, uh, might have uh, taken a late hit on Dankworth just as he threw the ball. And they're moving it forward. So that's a big 15-yarder called against Southern California. And now the Bruins are getting down in an area where it's four down country, down on the 13-yard line. Uh, uh, Trojans have been penalized a few yards uh, yeah. in this ball game. They've had four or five majors, I know, seven times for 96 yards. That's a lot of yardage. Now let's see if the Bruins can put one on the board. First down at the USC 13-yard line. Dankworth gives it to Theodos Brown. He punches inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. The Pacific 8 Conference, of course, furnishes the Western representative in the Rose Bowl. And this particular conference is very proud to be able to blend its academics with superb athletics. Over the last academic year, four different Pac-8 members won six national team championships. USC, UCLA now won two, and NCAA titles won. It's an annual harvest when you get to round up totaling up the championships between these two teams. Second down. Ball is inside the nine. It's Brown. Touchdown. So Theodos Brown goes over the right side and takes it in for six. So 15-yard penalty helped a lot. And Theodos Brown takes it in. Watch the blocking on the right side of the line. On the replay, he's untouched. Theodos Brown gets good blocking and, of course, clears the line of scrimmage and just walks into the end zone practically untouched. And uh, again, that's, I think it's a tribute to the to the Bruins. They've come back. They're on the the board with 3:59 left. It may be too little, too late, but uh, you give them credit for hanging in there and getting a touchdown on the board. We might might look at an onside kick next uh, on the kickoff. Timeout. 24-6. Waiting for the extra point. Make a weekend of football and fun even greater. Invite the Colonel and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Look at this, this is cooking, it's a meal. With three minutes and 59 seconds to play in the ball game here in the Los Angeles Coliseum, UCLA Bruins have finally scored, and they'll go for two. Dankworth rolls. He's got Walker wide open. Got him. So it is a 24 to 8 football game. Some of this crowd of 95,019 beginning to move out of the Coliseum, but not that many really. They're staying to watch the finale. We have a lot of fireworks before this one's over. Well, that was a good move. It takes three touchdowns, 24 points if they get the doubleheader every time. Here's Jim. Keith, though, while we've got a moment, just another update on the bowl situation. Once again, we want to remind you about our game, the Sugar Bowl, 7th ranked, 11-0. We'll be playing the Southwest Conference champion, probably Houston. All right, here's an onside kick as they set it up, sending all the Bruins over to that side of the field, and it works. UCLA gets the ball. UCLA Bruins took all 11 men, put them on that side of the field. And Frank Corral then hooked the ball in that direction, and it was covered by Molina of UCLA. Oh, what do you know about that? Let's have another look. Well, you like this is good uh, strategy here. They put everybody over on the left side. Actually, the ball is kicked well, but should have been recovered by one of the Trojans. It goes right through his hands. If we'll watch here closely. Dave Farmer. It's right at him. It's Dave Farmer. The ball just pops. Goes beyond him. And, of course, the Bruins have the ball. First down at the Southern California 47-yard line. Dankworth rolling the throw. Nobody to throw it to. And the Bruin quarterback has to carry it. He gets it around the 40, maybe inside the 40-yard line. Dankworth rolled out looking for somebody. He was looking for Rick Walker, I think, and Walker was not involved in the play, literally. He had curled to come back. He got the ball out of bounds, too, and stopped the clock. There were only seven seconds to uh, move down. 40-yard line, second down. He gained seven on the carry. 
Well, if they get a quick one in here and get another two-pointer, and it was good strategy because they only would have to score three times, three touchdowns with two doubleheaders, of course, uh, to tie it up at 24. Backward gives the ball inside, and there isn't anything on that one as Tyler, the left halfback, comes in, and he runs right into Walt Underwood, 95, and Rod Martin, 52. No gain. And the clock runs on that kind of a play. You probably were trying to spring Tyler, figuring that the Trojans would be back in a pass defense type of uh, alignment, but they stopped Tyler right at the line of scrimmage. James Sarpy, number four, into the lineup now for UCLA. Thankworth the throw, throws to Sarpy. He's got it, out of bounds at the Trojan 33-yard line. Good for the first down. Stops the clock again, 319 to go in the game. Well-timed play. Thankworth threw the ball before the break, and uh, it was a good catch. Number three right there is James Owens, the Olympic hurdler, coming into the lineup now for the Bruins at a halfback. He replaces Tyler in the backfield. Tyler's arm, obviously lame, as it just hangs down when he leaves the field. Sarpy and Henry go wide left. Dankworth back to throw. Rolls it left, throws it deep. Back into the sun comes Sarpy. Got it. Down he goes at the one yard line. Stops the clock. 3 10 to play in the game. And the Bruins are right down on the Trojan goal line. That was some kind of catch. He came back. The ball was underthrown a little bit, and he came back and took it. Take a look at it again. He just drives straight up the field. This is uh, Sarpy. The ball's underthrown just a tad. Watch him come back for it. He sees that it's underthrown, slows down, comes back and picks it off. And of course, the ball's at the one yard line. First and goal to go. Dankworth, touchdown. Now you know why most of the 95,000 stayed. Two-pointer attempt here again, I'm sure. So the Bruins playing a little scramble here, getting back into the act. It's now a 24 to 14 ball game. They'll go for two. Henry comes to the right. Dankworth down the line, turns it in, they get him short. Well, that, uh, that saves a big problem for the Trojans. It will require two more scores now on the part of UCLA rather than just one to tie it. 2.54 to go in a ball game, 24-14. With 2.54 to play in a ball game, UCLA will kick off and they'll go, they'll come this way this time, and the onside kick is uh, obviously coming up. They hit it over this way, and this time the Trojans control the ball as Howard stuttered. Number 87 had the ball bounce right up into his face, and he got a hold of it and hung on. So here's USC now, owning the football first down at their 48-yard line, leading by 10, 24-14. Here's the first time I've ever seen this particular type of move on yeah. an onside kick. I think Pepper Rogers used this at Georgia Tech a couple of times, and they put lines up everybody on one side, and of course it gives you... 11 men coming down after the football. Of course, this was kicked a big handle and a big bounce, and of course, it made it easy to field. But the ball had been a little lower. You had a lot of people, a lot of people down there trying to recover it. There's two timeouts uh, for each ball club, and uh, UCLA probably can control the clock for only two uh, plays. Two times, uh, I should say. Now we've got, uh, we're going to do it again. Wait no. a minute. We're going to do it again. Why? Defense! I don't know. Defense! Defense! I have not seen any particular sign as to why well, they're doing it again. Was the, uh, let's see if they, they didn't penalize anybody. Well, that's the second time we've had the, the kick redone because the referee had not declared the ball ready for play, apparently. Bruins went ahead and kicked it. And now they're going to have to do it again. Let's see, obviously they'll try to go for the onside again, you would think. Yeah, Terrell well. comes back, and he'll tee it up. So now we've got 2.53 to play in a ball game. Somebody uh, 
I bet they go to their left this time. Dave Farmer's over there. The last time the ball got away from Dave, number 15, the Trojan fullback. Obviously, USC putting halfbacks and defensive backs and wide receivers and tight ends and so forth. Oh, going to come to this side again. Same move on it. And here's Corral's left footed. Oh, he hits it away this time. And it's going to squib down and go dead. Picked up by Charles White at about the eight yard line. And Charles gets back to the 15. And there he is corralled, literally. 2.48 to play in a ball game. And there's a penalty flag on the field. I think that's a penalty flag over there. A little late hit on uh, White. Bruins obviously frustrated. They were just totally ineffective in the third quarter and well into the fourth quarter before they ever got their first first down of the second half. Penalty flag was thrown back up field at the point of the kickoff. But that being the case, uh, it could be against UCLA. But let's wait until the officials define it. They're talking now with the USC field captain. That would be Vince Evans, I guess. Uh, he's conversing now with Vince, and the Trojans are going to take the ball. Well, that was a uh, unnecessary roughness penalty, I think, Keith, on White. All right, it was offside. Against UCLA, declined. Then uh, the personal foul called after the play was dead. Right. And it moves it up to the near the 30-yard line where it'll be Trojans' ball. I don't think we're going to have time for our Prudential College school board today, so we'll try to run down the major scores before we leave you here at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Our research man and spotter today, Jerry Klein, Jimmy Ritz on the stats. Now all the Trojans have to do is freeze the ball. They give it to a pretty good horse for just that purpose, fellow named Ricky Bell. And he takes it up over the 40-yard line for what appears to be a first down. 162 yards for Ricky today on 34 carries. Michigan defeating Ohio State 22-0. Represents the Big Ten in the Rose Bowl and apparently will be playing the Southern California Trojans. Houston. In the fourth quarter, 27 to 11 over Texas Tech. And with only Rice remaining on the schedule, a neighborhood scuffle down in Houston. Looks like the Cougars might win that Southwest Conference title first time out of the blocks. First down for USC. Just trying to freeze the ball and keep it out of the hands of the Bruins. And it's Bell again. And Ricky just runs it into the stack and gets the clock rolling at 2.15 to play. Maryland finished the season 11 and 0. Jerry Claiborne's fine team. Will go, apparently, will go, in fact, to the Cotton Bowl, apparently against Houston. They beat Virginia today, 28 to nothing. Oklahoma State. Looks like Terry Miller cinched up his girdle today and had a big outing as Oklahoma State <laughs> defeated Iowa State, 42-21. That has to be a bitter loss for Earl Bruce and his Cyclones, but they've had a great season and may yet wind up in a postseason bowl. Second down and seven for USC, and it's Ricky Bell one more time. Here is another piece of bowl information for you. The Alabama Crimson Tide have been invited and they have accepted a spot in the Liberty Bowl. Bear went on record last week. He didn't want to play any folks from the Big Eight. But I would imagine the Liberty Bowl folks, Bill McElroy and all those people, would be politicking a little bit with the Bear. Said, come on, Bear, how about taking on some of those folks from just across the river? We could have a heck of a ball game. And almost anybody you pick out of that Big Eight this year, I think, would give you a pretty fair football game. Third down. Third down and four from the 46-yard line of USC with a minute 44 to play. It is first down as Mosse Tatupu carries it over the left side, came back to the weak side with it, and got a big, big, big first down. From here, I think Southern California can probably run the clock out. UCLA, obviously, will have to spend their remaining timeouts. Uh, Jimmy, how many do they have? They have one more. So they kill the clock. Bring a new football on. And the big Coliseum grows quiet. Clock will start going again now with 120 to go. 120. Vince Evans keeps it on first down and just punches over the right side of the line. It's 110 to play in the ball game now. Of course, everybody out in this part of the country interested if 
the Orange Bowl folks are going to give UCLA a call. They probably have already talked to Woody Hayes and the Ohio State Buckeyes, losers to Michigan today. 107 to play in this ball game. NCAA College Football, this game, USC and UCLA, brought to you by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Goodyear Tires and Goodyear Service for more good years in your car. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Pizza Hut, where you'll find a lot of good things under our roof. Thick and chewy pizza, thin and crispy pizza, and lots more. A lot of good things at Pizza Hut. Of course, the blimp today provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. to play in the ball game. Bruins now, timeout. They still have one on the board up here, Keith. The I think scoreboard. they're out of them, though. Scoreboard shows them with one more. I don't know whether that's correct or not. Official. Second down and eight. Vince Evans gets the clock going as he takes the ball and just falls down. A penalty flag, however, goes down with him. The official statistician says that UCLA has no timeouts remaining. But that stops the clock when the flag goes down at 1.04 to play in the ball game. The executive producer of NCAA football is Rune Arledge. Our coverage of today's game was produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andy Sedaris. Our technical director was John Allen. There's a holding call against Southern California. That's number four holding against the Trojans, and that's going to put them over the 100 mark in total penalty yardage today. That'll be 111 yards. So length of the football field and a little bit more. And those are tough penalties to overcome, which is all the more remarkable with the score that they've got on the board, 24 points. Plus that one break in the uh, of the fumble and the Thurman score set the tone of the game, it seems to me. The offensive and defensive players of the ball game. Well, there's room for argument on that, certainly, but I my vote goes to Dennis Thurman. Dennis Thurman, you like Thurman in there, huh? Yes, I like sir, uh, I like Eric Matthews, I think it was, or Eric Williams, I should say. Number 55, he had quite a day. Of course, Thurman is a, a, a real threat as a defender. I'll tell you, I got to go along with Thurman, I guess, because, Keith, you, you've seen him before. <laughs> So Dennis Thurman gets the vote for the defensive player of the game, scored a touchdown and saved a couple for USC. As for the offensive player of the ball game, the man I think that you've got to like is number 42, Ricky Bell, because he was their money man, the guy they went to, and the guy who froze the ball. He carried the ball 36 times today on a sore ankle. He gained 167 yards. Well, yeah, you've got to go along with that. Uh, he, he had a great day today with the so-called injury. Of course, a, year, a week ago, I guess he did not make much yardage, but he's back again and healthy, and uh, I guess the Irish will be looking at him next week. Should be a great one between Southern California and Notre Dame right out of the Coliseum next Saturday afternoon. Only nine seconds to play in the ball game, and everybody in a Trojan shirt now is going to get a chance to get into the ball game. I think most everybody has played who is healthy, as the Trojans leading 24 to 14 need to just get the clock going one more time, and that will do it. The last time USC shut out of UCLA was six to nothing back in 1947. Southern California will be playing Notre Dame next week, then on to the Rose Bowl against Michigan. And, of course, by next Saturday, we will have some idea as to where Pittsburgh stands because the Panthers top ranked in many of the polls. In fact, I guess all of the polls right now will have to handle Joe Paterno's ball club in their traditional A&M in Texas. We had one other major surprise today, at least surprise to me, in that Houston was able to handle Texas Tech so well into that late into the fourth quarter and become the apparent uh, leader for the, uh, the Cotton Bowl spot. Seems that Houston has gotten stronger as the season has progressed. And uh, stepping in for the first year and winning the conference championship and going to the Cotton Bowl is quite an accomplishment for Bill Yeoman. Our travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. We invite you to fly the friendly skies of United where you're the boss. We're only nine...
seconds remaining to play in this game. It is now academic. The clock rolling with three. Two. No, it stops at three. They've got to move the chains. On fourth down, the UCLA Bruins will get the ball and one more crack at it with three seconds to play in the game. And here I'm sure that USC will just uh, put a three-man front up there and drop everybody off and say, go ahead, take your best shot. <laughs> a touchdown will not change the outcome. Well, look at there. Texas Tech is fighting back. Yeah. Houston leading 27-19 now with, we understand, about two minutes to play in the game. So Houston broke big, but Steve Sloan's Red Raiders are fighting back. Yeah, a two-pointer with a touchdown would tie, tie that up. Mm. Good ball game. And uh, if they should get off with a tie, of course, that would put Texas Tech in very good shape. The Red Raiders have Arkansas and Baylor remaining on their schedule, whereas Houston has only one conference game left, that against Rice. But it's still alive, very much alive. Three seconds to play. Get a new football in. Chains are in place now, and I'm sure this one will have to do it, unless there is a penalty. Well, Dankworth will put it up. He gets a chance. With that defense, he just throws it up. And it's batted away. And the ball game is over. The Southern California Trojans have won the Pacific 8 Conference Championship in the Rose Bowl 24-14 over UCL. There's a lot and so it will be Southern California and Michigan in the Rose Bowl as the Trojans beat the Bruins here today. Keith Jackson, Mara Parsigan, Jim Lampley, and this has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Final score, USC 24, UCLA 14.